That's for South Ward voters only. If you have any questions, please call the clerk's office at 609-989-3187, or you can email me at clerk at trentonnj.org. As I advised at the last meeting, the deadline to register for this upcoming primary was May 18th, so it is too late to register if you are not registered, but there is still plenty of time to register for November's election. You can get a registration form through the clerk's office by emailing me, by coming in person, or if you give a call, we'll drop one in the mail to you. Thank you very much, and have a nice day. We'll be getting very started. We're going to be getting started very shortly. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have just joined us, please take the time to mute your devices before the meeting now. If you're on a landline or a cell phone, you can mute yourself by dialing star six. If you're on another device or a smartphone, you can look for the little microphone and press it until you see the little slash line go through. We'll be getting started very shortly. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Collin. Can you hear me? Mr. Collin, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am, I can. Just took me a minute to unmute myself. Okay. All right, are we ready? Uh, we are. Just give me one second, and, uh, and we should be ready to go. I'm ready. Uh, let me see who we have here. I believe we have enough. We have Mr. Blakely is here. Mr. Michelle is here, but that's all I see so far, Council President. I'm here. Ah, there we go. <laughs> I didn't see you yet. All righty. So uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This meeting is being called to order. Adequate notice of this meeting has been given in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act. Pursuant to Public Laws 1975, Chapter 231, this agenda is complete to the extent known and was sent to the Trenton Times and the Trentonian newspapers, posted on the first floor bulletin board in the City Hall, filed in the City Clerk's Office, and posted on the City of Trenton's website. Formal action will be taken. Roll call, Mr. Conlon. Yes, ma'am. I'm now called roll, Mr. Blakely. Present. Ms. Caldwell Wilson. Present. Mr. Harrison. I know he'll be here shortly. Mr. Michelle. Present. Mr. Rodriguez. Present. Ms. Vaughn. I'd like to say she should be here shortly. Council President McCray. Present. Council President, we do have a quorum. I'll now call the directors with your leave. Mr. Yes, Freeman. Good evening and uh, present. Good evening, sir. Mr. Cherry. I'm present. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, sir. Mr. Liston. Present. Good evening, sir. Uh, Ms. Samuel, are you here? I'm here. I can hear you, ma'am. A little bit. You're a little fuzzy. Uh, is Mr. Bridges here? Present. Good enough, sir. Thank you. Director Coley. Chief Mazier. Good evening, President. Good evening, sir. Director Delisle. President. Good evening, sir. Dr. Lopez. Good evening, I'm present. Good evening, sir. Dr. Uh, Director Ronit here. Director Richardson. I 
Madam President, good evening, everyone. Good evening, ma'am. Director Lavender. Present. And Acting Director Zelensky, CFO. Present. Good evening, sir. That's present. We have a quorum. The directors are present, as noted. Uh, we have uh, a docket. Uh, would you put, we also have an executive session. I didn't know if you wanted to go to executive session first. Yes, um, before we... Excuse me, excuse me. Uh, Matthew, Councilwoman Vaughn, I'm on the line. So noted, ma'am. Well, you didn't, you didn't introduce me, so I don't know if you noted it or not. No, I didn't see you arrive, ma'am. We were in the okay. middle of the docket. We just took roll. All right. So my apologies. Uh, Council President? So, um, Mr. Mr. Conlon, um, before you read the um, notice to go into executive session, um, I would like to allow uh, Councilman Michelle to do a minute of silence for one of our 30-year veterans for the Trent Police Department. Councilman Michelle. We can't hear you, uh, Councilman. Still coming in fuzzy, sir. A moment. Okay. Mm. It's a very, very bad audio for you, Councilman. So, Mr. Um, Mr. Collin, um, until um, Councilman Michel, uh gets that audio situation straightened out, would you please uh, move forward to read the uh, executive session uh, resolution? Yes, do I have a, uh, this is executive session resolution 21-219. This is authorizing the city council of the city of Trenton to hold an executive session which excludes the public. Be it resolved by the city council of the city of Trenton, this body will convene an executive session at the city council conference room, city hall, in this case, Microsoft. <laughs> And it will be limited to consideration of an item or items with respect to which the public may be excluded pursuant to Section 7B of the Open Public Meetings Act under NJSA 10 colon 4-12. The general nature of the subject or subjects to be discussed. Attorney-client privilege, litigation, Gussie Orr v. Trenton City Council, Council Legislative Council, and redevelopment lawsuits. And that's Legislative Council is in the Council Legislative Attorney. And then attorney-client privilege litigation, Bailey versus City of Trenton, OAL docket number CSV 361-2019S, stated as precisely as possible, presently possible. Following is in time when the circumstances under which the discussion conducted at said meeting can be disclosed to the public, May 27, 2022, or when the need for confidentiality no longer exists, whichever is later. The public that is excluded from said meeting, further notice is dispensed with all important sections 8A, 8 and 4A of the Open Public Meetings Act. Do I have a motion? Um, so I have a motion by Council President McBride. I have a sec. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second by Ms. Caldwell Wilson. Council President, would you like me to go to the roll now, or would you like uh, Mr. Michelle to do the moment of silence? We can. Yeah. Yes. Is is your audio straightened out, Councilman? <laughs> we can't hear you at all. Yeah, if you can move closer to the microphone, it, it, you, you're a little distant. You're not being picked up real well. I'm right on it. Now you're better. Now that's a little bit better. No, I'm sorry, sir. We're just not getting you. It's, we're getting every other word. I'm not exactly sure. I don't know if it's the connection or, uh, or if it's something with the microphone. No. President McBride? Yes, yes, Councilman Blakely. Is there any way uh, that we can have the executive session at the end? I mean, I know we have uh, a full docket and uh, we have members of the public who are here um, to, you know, listen to our proceedings and that, you know, would be respectful of the public if we had uh, our agenda meeting and then left uh, the executive session. Who knows how long this executive session could take? But I just think it would be you know, more respectful to members of the public who have taken time out of their schedule to listen to us go over the docket and do that first and then do the uh, executive session after we have done 
you know, the business of the city in terms of the review of the docket? Well, well, Councilman, you know, and the public knows, too, that the um, attorneys are on um, an hourly wage here um, anytime they come to uh, these executive sessions. And so we would like to hear them and, and be able to get them um, off the clock. So um, I, I think it will be productive for us to hear them first so that they can um, say whatever it is that they need to say to us and then we could... Uh, well, what stops us? What stops us from, you know, having uh, the? And this is a question. I'm, I'm literally asking. Um, what stops us from telling them that, hey, we anticipate we'll be done the docket at 8 p.m. or at 7 p.m. and then, you know, uh, because have the them have the because those arrangements were already made prior to this meeting, and all of the um, and uh, they made their schedule based on. Uh, the time slot that they were given. Well, just for the record, I would just hope that for future meetings, if we can, you know, generally have them after uh, our uh, docket review and just so, for the future. Thank you, so, President McBride. So noted, Councilman. Uh, Mr. Collin, um, um, would you explain to the public uh, that we are going into executive session and um, we will come right back as soon as we possibly can. I don't know the time but it should not, hopefully, within the, um, 30 to 40 minutes. So we can wrap this up. Let's get to Mr. Combs. Mr. Combs, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Yes, yes we can, Combs. Okay. Uh, a minute of silence for Detective Bob Persillo, who passed away approximately 30 minutes ago. He was an ID detective for 30 years in the city of Trenton. Be greatly missed. Thank you, Bob. Rest in peace. Amen. Thank you, Councilman Michelle, for that moment of silence for one of our veterans for the Trenton uh, Police Department. Mr. Collin, may we move into executive session? We can't hear you, Mr. Collin. Unmute yourself. Thank you. I just have to call the roll for the vote, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Blakely, your vote to go to yes. executive Yes. Colwell Wilson? Yes. Ms. Colwell Wilson? Council Vice President, can you hear me, ma'am? Yes, I can. Oh, no, I apologize. No, it's all right. Mr. Harrison, are you here, sir? Yes. Uh, your vote to go to exec, sir? Yes. Council, Councilman Michelle? Yes. Councilman Rodriguez? Yes. Council Member Vaughn? Yes. Council President McBride? Yes. So ordered. Uh, we are, ladies and gentlemen, we are adjourning to executive session. We will be returning shortly. Uh, if IT could put the uh, uh, notice up on the screen for us. Uh, once again, we will be returning uh, shortly. We have some items to discuss under attorney-client privilege. Uh, and once we are done, we will return and proceed with the meeting. Thank you for your patience in this matter. Where's 
sure that nothing's wrong with this. I'm getting back in. It's off on mute. Yes, Council President. I just wanted to give uh, the presentation a heads up that they are that they will be teed up momentarily, uh, and Mr. Lipset and company will be joining us very shortly. Uh, if they are not already here, and uh, I believe Mr. Lipset is here, but let me take the roll to return from executive session. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, please take this time to mute your devices. If you're on a telephone, please use star six or press the little microphone until it has a little slash through it. If you are on a smart device, please mute yourself at this time. Uh, thank you very much. We'll be having a presentation shortly. We're going to start again very shortly. for everybody. Uh, Mr. Uh, Harrison, have you joined us back yet? I think that's all we're waiting on. Yeah, yeah I've been over. Oh, there you are. I see you there now. Council President, would you like me to call the roll? Yes, please. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Blake. Present. Thank you. Ms. Paula Wilson. I see you, ma'am. I saw, I, I saw your microphone blink. I think you might have. Uh, Mr. Harrison. Present. Mr. Michelle. Present. Mr. Rodriguez. Present. Ms. Vaughn. Present. Council President McBride. Present. Madam, we have a quorum. We'll call the directors. Mr. Cruz. Present, sir. Thank you, sir. Mr. Cherry. <clears throat> Present. Thank you, Colin. Mr. Liston. Present. Um, Sally Samuel or somebody from the law department? Sally Samuel is here for the law department. Thank you. Mr. Bridges noted here is the, uh, as well. Uh, Sheila Coley, director of the police department. Director Coley? Chief Mazier. Present. Thank you, sir. Director Delisle. Present. Director Lopez. Present. Thank you. Director Onitiri. Director Richardson. Present. Thank you, ma'am. Director Lavenberg. Present. Acting Director and CFO Zelensky. Present. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, madam, we have a presentation tonight. Uh, the core, We have a quorum. The directors are present. As noted, uh, would you like to proceed to, pre to the presentation? Yes, definitely. Uh, Mr. Lipset, are you prepared? Yes. Um, and do you need control of any sort? Um, my, my colleague from the DCA, Michelle Mead, is going to need control. Michelle, are you there? Yes, I am. Yep. Okay, hold on one second. She is now a presenter, so you are ready to go and shouldn't have any problems from there. Let her introduce herself for the record, Mr. Conlon. Good evening, council members. I am Michelle Mead from the Division of Local Government Services. In addition to uh, Mr. Lipset, who was just speaking, uh, Doug Pettix, who is part of the Local Government Services, is also on the line tonight. Thank you for joining us. It's Thank my you. pleasure. And I have a short presentation prepared for you. Um, which will step you through some of the particulars of a change from your current fiscal year budget into a, into the calendar year budget. So, and then I'll be happy to take some questions. We'll be happy to take questions. So first, just a couple of quick terms because I will be using some of the slides. I'll refer to TY, which is the transition year or called the short year. It's a six month budget which would be July 1st to December 31st. 
And then the calendar year, we call it CY, the calendar year budget, which would obviously be January 1st to December 31st. So here are some of the benefits of reversion to the calendar year. And we've got, we went through this process, as many of you probably know, with the city of Patterson and the city of Camden in 2020. Um, and now we're talking to the city of Trenton about the same, same proposal. And so there's a, a, a number of benefits about transitioning back to the calendar year budget, budget cycle. Uh, first of all, as probably many of you are aware, at this state, fiscal year tax rate is often confusing to residents and it creates the illusion of jumps up and down. So it, take, it creates a situation where it looks like your tax rate is going up and down throughout the course of the year. And a change to a calendar year cycle will stabilize the tax rate and is much simpler for residents to understand. Um, currently, the city issues estimated tax bills, I understand, every quarter which also can be confusing, and, and again, that, that tax rate going back and forth sometimes. And unless you have to do estimated tax bills, which you know can occur from time to time, um, you will only have one tax bill per year, again, causing uh, less confusion for residents. The reversion to calendar year would also be expected to have a positive um, impact on your cash position and may generate some substantial surplus. And I'm going to go over that in the next slide because the city will have uh, two years of regular state aid in an 18 month period and only one pension payment. And again, I'll show you the details of that on the next slide. Um, you can also be in the position where you may wish to convert back to a regular tax sale. Uh, currently, the city of Trenton has an accelerated tax sale, which is a tax sale in the current year. Um, the regular tax sale cycle is a post-year tax sale, tax sale, and uh, depending on the results of your cash flow analysis, the city may wish to convert back to the regular tax sale, which would be the post-year tax sale. So that's something that you can uh, determine after you do your cash flow analysis, which is part of the requirement for moving back to the calendar year budget. And um, it's much easier to recruit a certified tax collector without the state fiscal year certification. So if you have a vacancy in, a few, in the future in that position, it will be much easier to recruit because there are many more certified tax collectors than there are those who have the additional state fiscal year certification. So as promised, um, I'm going to just say a little bit about the impact on surplus, the potential impact on surplus. The regular state aid that the city of Trenton receives um, is about $69 million per year. So as you can see uh, by the slide, that would be $138 million over two years. And that includes all your normal state aid, like Comptra, Energy Receipts, Capital City Aid. And your annual pension payment is expected to be around uh, $25 million. So this is a very simple, and you can see obviously that if you're having two state aid payments in an 18 month period. So we're talking about the transition year and the full first calendar year budget and only one pension payment in that time period that this could generate. A, obviously there's a substantial difference between the, the total of the state aid and the total of the pension payment. And this is what would generate the surplus. This is the main reason why surplus would be generated. And I just wanna point out that this is a very simplistic, simplistic view and it's just used to illustrate why this will generate surplus. However, we are not suggesting that the city will generate surplus at this, at this level, meaning the difference between these two numbers. And the actual amount of surplus generated will be based on the actual inflows and outflows. And some of that will be, um, will be able to be judged as to what the potential could be based on the cash flow analysis that the city finance team would do in concert with assistance with the staff, the financial regulation staff at local government services. So this is the, the major benefit of reversion. And based on the pre preliminary review that the local government services team has done, the reversion would be expected to, to generate significant surplus in excess of what the city might normally expect in a normal budget year. And again, however, that cash flow analysis is going to be an important determination to understand what else is coming in and out um, during your 18-month uh, period, and particularly during the six-month period, 
um, to be able to see what the potential might be for the impact on surplus. And as this additional surplus, it would be a one-time revenue due to these, this unique opportunity where you have the two, two state aid payments and only one pension payment in that period, the surplus generated would be restricted for use for fiscal stability measures. Things like establishing and increasing reserves for storm and emergencies, tax appeal returns, accumulated absence liabilities, workers' compensation and other insurance, and unemployment, which may have the impact of stabilizing the tax rate and increasing favorable bond ratings for the city. And there also, as was done for the other uh, communities who switched from the fiscal year to the calendar year budget cycle, you may also be permitted to use some for a one-time special project. And I also want to point out at this time that this, we're not, there's no expectations that this is going to solve the city's structural deficit. But it can be an important piece of the financial stability puzzle, which could set the stage for further fiscal recovery. And that is what we have seen in the other two cities who recently went, underwent uh, this change in budget cycle. There are a couple of potential drawbacks to the reversion. There's the preparation of the additional budget for the transition year for that six-month period from July 1 to December 31st. That would be done, again, with the, with the assistance of the financial team at local government services. Um, for that six-month uh, TY period, there would be the preparation of an additional annual financial statement and the preparation of an additional audit. Um, the good news is, is that even though those, are, uh, those would be requirements uh, that are um, um, outside of what is required today, uh, the cost of reversion, so the cost of that audit, if you need any a particular legal or financial advice, the state reimburses for these expenses. I want to quickly look at the process. Um, so the first part of the process would be the preparation of the monthly cash flow for the transition year and for the calendar year period and the budgets for the transition year and for the calendar year. And then those would be, that analysis would be prepared by the uh, city staff. Again, with the assistance of anyone from local government uh, services. Then the completed um, cash flow and the budget analysis will be reviewed with the LGS staff. And then uh, the city would move forward with the adoption of the reversion ordinance and an application for a local finance board approval for the change from the fiscal year to the calendar year. And here is a view of the time frame. So uh, because we're already at the end of May, um, the transition year and calendar year cash flow and budgets would be something that would be prepared immediately. And, and I know that um, staffs are, are examining those things right now. Um, the deadline for the local finance board application, so you would have to have materials submitted for the local finance board, including the application, the adopted ordinance, a resolution um, that allows the application to be submitted to the local finance board, and the supporting materials, which would mainly be the cash flow analysis and the budgets for the TY and CY periods would be uh, due to the local finance board by June 23rd. And the local finance board meeting is July 14th. So uh, that, is the, that is the schedule. So overall, we think this is a, a significant benefit to the city. It was found to be a significant benefit to the other uh, cities who uh, went through this change just last year. Um, there is some additional work, but with the state assistance, um, we're going to, you know, be there as a partner along your alongside of you during the entire process, and you would be reimbursed for those out-of-pocket expenses that I mentioned. Um, we think that the calendar year process, without the changes in the tax rate and the estimated tax bills going out multiple times a year, that it makes it an easier process for residents to understand. Um, we project that the generation of uh, we project that there will be a generation of, of significant surplus that would not otherwise be produced and will be used for fiscal stability measures, which will help the fiscal recovery of the city. And there's no negative impact on the state aid that the city already receives. 
and um, it serves the goals that we both have. Um, both the state and the city are working together to enhance the city's fiscal recovery. So that is a goal we both share, and this would um, be a significant way to um, kickstart that next level of recovery for the city. So that's my quick presentation, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Myself or the other members of my team would be happy to answer your questions. Yes, Madam it's, council, it's, it's council, yes, uh, uh, council Westward. Councilman Rodriguez. Yes, my question is, uh, how soon are we going to get that budget? It's supposed to start in July, right? And uh, we are in almost June now. And uh, in, uh, lately, the last three years, we have had problems with the administration giving us that budget on time. So what guarantees that we're going to get uh, we're going to have to have, I believe, uh, budget hearings and everything. The budget has to be developed before, you know, before July 1st, I believe. So how is this going to work? Well, I can answer part of that question, part of that question, and then the city administration can answer the other piece of it. Um, you do not have to have your budget adopted by July 1st. Uh, that would not be necessary. And, and as you saw from the time schedule, the local finance board meeting would not be till July 14th, but you would have to have uh, the the bones of that budget worked out and ready for that July 14th local finance board meeting. But someone from the administration can you know speak specifically about what they have in mind for their budget cycle. Charles. Councilman, did that answer your question? Well, I, I'm expecting the administration part. Okay, so that uh, would be Mr. Cruz to come in. Uh, yes, Council President, thank you. Um, and I want to thank the, the, the Department of Community Affairs for um, um, being here tonight and um, assisting us in providing a presentation. Um, I, I, it was definitely uh, well uh, put together. And... Um, one of the important things that uh, that that uh, that was mentioned is is that uh, we need to meet a deadline for the actual application, and that is why in your uh, um, in tonight's uh, docket we have the first reading of the ordinance uh, to move to a calendar year, uh, because by the time we get to uh, June twenty third the ordinance must be fully um, approved by council and the second reading uh, has to take place on the June uh, 17th meeting uh, by this council um, because the next meeting is is the day after the application is due at at the uh, at the local finance board which would be on uh, on June 24th and this needs to be in on the 23rd so this is why we are having the that portion uh, on this docket uh, to begin the process. Uh, when it comes to the budget, uh, Council President and the rest of the Council members, uh, Ron Zelensky has been uh, working with the, uh, with the Department of Finance in putting together the transition budget. Uh, and um, he, as per our conversation uh, this afternoon, the budget is uh, I believe it's like 99% complete, and uh, we will be ready to, um, uh, once we get clearance, uh, we will be uh, uh, putting it in front of council uh, for your reviews. So uh, that will be coming in the, uh, probably in the coming days. Council President? I apologize. I was asking Councilman Rodriguez if that answered his questions, and then we can move on. Well, I am very concerned because usually, <laughs> why do we have to get this at the last minute? You know, always we have to be rushing to pass things. I saw the ordinance. I read the ordinance. Just one page. There's no background to it. Nothing else. No explanations. Why couldn't this? Uh, have been presented to us soon as we approve the other budget, you know, because I don't believe we have enough time from now until July 14th 
to do what you're hearing, some of the things. That's my concern. Uh, Council member, you, do, you don't, this is Michelle Mead again, you don't have to have your budget adopted by the uh, local finance board meeting. Um, you have to have the budget in, in pretty good shape. We do understand there will be some small changes um, and hopefully it will be introduced before the 14th, but it doesn't have to be adopted by that time period. Uh, uh, Councilman, we can hear you. Councilman. Councilman Rodriguez. I took care of it, ma'am. He was on a phone call. He apparently got received a phone call, so I muted him. Yes. Yeah, uh, yes, I'll, 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 I will think about that during my vote. Thank you. Okay. Um, next is Councilwoman uh, Vaughn. Yes, thank you, Council President McBride. Um, Mr. Collin, can you put the uh, presentation back up on the screen, please? I want to give Ms. Meek the last slide. So my question is, while Mr. Collin is putting that slide back up on the screen, um, the last slide, uh, Mr. Collin, please. Uh, my question is, you stated that there were other municipalities that have gone through this process. Can you name them again, please? Yes, the city of Patterson and the city of Camden went through this process just in 2020. Okay. So the city of Patterson and the city of Camden, uh, they're deemed to have the same attributes like the city of Trenton, you know, have a significant rate of poverty, low income, uh, a inadequate, say, tax base. Um, in essence, fiscally distressed cities, right? They're fiscally distressed, right? And they're and they were are, are both still under uh, DCA oversight. Uh, they are both part of the transition aid program, yes. Yes. And they're both, you know, again, inner cities, urban, uh, uh, urban uh, uh, municipalities, um, same attributes as the city of Trenton. We're currently fiscally distressed, and we're not getting sufficient aid from the state, certainly not the city of Trenton, um, and that's who I'm speaking for. Um, and there's other revenue sources that the city of Trenton can get from the state that haven't that we haven't been getting. And I won't go into the, that, but I'll just concentrate, just focus on your presentation here and your proposal. So this is a process that you're recommending to fiscally distressed cities that do not have an adequate source of, of tax base because of our high rate of, of poverty and low income. So I'm looking at your third bullet point that says project the generation of substantial surplus revenue that would not otherwise be produced to be used for fiscal stability measures. Now, what is the basis of the surplus revenue? Where is that coming from? Um, it's coming from the fact that in the 18 month period, you would be getting two years worth of state aid. It's because of the way that the calendar works on the state aid distributions. So state aid is provided to all municipalities between August and December of every year. So you would be getting the first bunch of uh, state aid in the first in the six month transition period. And then you would also get the distribution of state aid during the regular calendar year period. Again, and it would be in uh, August through December of uh, 2022. So in that 18 month period, you have two two uh, draws of state aid, which you would normally get. And in that 18 month period, you only have one pension payment. You would have pension payment in um, April of 2022. So that's the vehicle that generates the surplus. And I just wanna make one other point. The state is not just offering this to fiscally distressed cities. Uh, Many towns that have already been on the state fiscal year program have already transitioned off the state fiscal year program. And the state would welcome any other communities who are still on state fiscal year, there's very few, would welcome any of the others to also um, switch back to the calendar year. Okay. Um, but by and large, um, cities that look like Trenton, say Newark, Jersey City, they're still on fiscal um, state fiscal year, correct? 
No, they're not. I thought Newark, Newark's on calendar year? Yes. Okay. I, I, I wasn't aware. So, um, what my question is, easier for residents to understand a tax bill. So, how much uh, tax, how is it going to impact the tax cycle for the city of Trenton? Because that's a revenue source, right? It doesn't impact the tax cycle at all. We're just talking about... So, so let me finish my question, please. Yeah, so I when, for, each budget, for each budget cycle, so we're not going to have, we're not going to pass a, a tax increase for the residents as we move to the calendar year cycle? I'm not, this, this is not in reference at all to the tax rate itself. We're talking about understanding the tax rate, not the composition of the tax rate or what the tax rate will be. We're talking about understanding generically what the tax rate is. Um, in the state fiscal year, towns have to adjust their tax rate to be a calendar year tax rate. And then many of the communities are giving out, uh, who are in state fiscal year, are sending out multiple tax bills per year. That's what causes the confusion. So in a, in a calendar year scenario, you would be issuing one tax bill uh, during that period, unless you have to issue a, an uh, estimated tax bill um, waiting for collections to come in, but that would be only in that eventuality. Okay, so I'm trying to accept, assess the impact during the transition period from fiscal calendar, from fiscal, from the state fiscal year end to the calendar year end. So we just uh, went through a budget cycle, fiscal year 21. It ended in. Uh, I guess we've just seen a tax increase very small due to the pandemic, but now that we're going to have to do a six-month budget, will there be a tax imposed on the residents of the city for that period as well? Yes, there will uh, have to be. Go, I'm sorry, go ahead, whoever was speaking. No, excuse me, you, um, I would have to give them the floor. Um, okay. I didn't see a hand to go up. It was Mr. Cruz, ma'am. Okay, but I, I didn't see his hand go up. So, so um, back to the question. Uh, I, I'm not asking Mr. Cruz the question. I'm asking the, Michelle from DCA. Um, so, will, will the citizens of Trenton see an, a, another tax increase within a short period of time, within the next six months, due to um, performing a six-month budget? The six-month budget itself will not um, will not be the thing that will determine whether there's a tax rate increase. That the, the, this, this going to a, switching to the, the uh, new budget year is not a cause of a tax rate increase. Whether there's a tax rate increase will be determined based on the actual budget that's adopted by the city for that period. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then also, as you stated, it will also depending on the, uh, the fiscal stability um, analysis, right? Will be the cash flow analysis exactly yes right so based on again as I stated we're a fiscal distress city this is why we're under your oversight so since we, we are more than likely that calculation is going to absolutely reflect I'm, I'm I'm predicting that it's going to reflect that you will need uh, to uh, increase a, a tax right I mean we are fiscally distressed we're not a a one of those very wealthy um, uh, uh, municipalities that have a robust uh, tax um, uh, base. So what is your projections? What are your anticipations about Trenton regarding will we be, will we see a tax increase for that same period? I, I cannot speak to that um, without having all the details of the budget in hand. So when but, the when the city uh, finance team reviews with the team at local government services what the needs are for the city you know a tax rate could generate a tax rate um is dependent upon what you include in your budget those are decisions that local government services not is not going to be making those are those are decisions that the city of trenton will be making okay. so i i can't say whether there will be a tax rate increase or not because those decisions will be yours to make okay I, i'm just basing it on the fact that we know you know, as our fiscal monitor, what our, our tax revenues are looking like. Part of the MOU is uh, there's some measures there, some metrics that we have to meet, right, around generating sufficient revenues to cover um, our, our budget uh, and our city expenses. 
And you know we have not made that mark. We haven't made that mark in over a decade. And so here we are. I mean, is that right? Or, or, or am I wrong, Michelle? I am not intimate with the details of the Trenton budget, but the bottom line here is, is that the switch to the transition year and a calendar year budget in and of itself does not does not affect the tax rate. The tax rate is affected by the budget that's adopted by the city. Okay, and, and we know when we all know what that budget is going to look like in when we when we perform it, that uh, we we are not going to have sufficient revenues. Um, and I don't think this is a proposal. In my in my humble opinion, I do not think this is a proposal for a city that's in fiscal distress. And um, and I'm very disappointed that our uh, uh, the, the the agency that's supposed to provide the oversight to Trent, the city of Trenton presents something like this to us. So I will um, yield my time to uh, the council president, Nick Bride. Thank you. Any of the council members? Would like to have any questions? So um, I do have a question that I would like to ask, and that is about the uh, the pension. So if we uh, if we're skipping a pension payment, how would that affect the future of our pension payments for our employees? If, if if we're skipping, if if, if you're going to be working with almost one hundred and sixty three million dollars in eighteen months, uh, why do you need to skip the pension payment? And how would that affect the future of the pension? Um, you're not skipping a pension payment. The, the city has already made its pension payment for 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 the calendar year 2021 because pension pension is due one time a year. The city has already paid its calendar year 2021 pension obligation in April of this year. So what the reason that this works again is because in the 18 month period that would start July 1st, 2021 and go until December 31st, 2022, in that 18 month period, you would have two years worth of your state aid payments and only one payment of pension, which would be due in April of 2022. So you've already, there's no missed payments. The city is already up to date in its payments and you would be continuing those payments. But in the 18 month transition period, again, with the six month budget and the 12 month budget to follow it, you would have two uh, years worth of state aid and one pension payment in 18 months. And that's what can generate the surplus. Okay. But then my, my second question would be the, um, the uh, 30, 35, uh, 36 million. Um, where the, I'm, I'm about that. The, the the transitional aid. So this council put forth a resolution not to ex, not to accept the transitional aid. I can hardly aid. hear you, Councilwoman. And now you're saying that if we go to the calendar year, not only are we accepting transitional aid but we're accepting transitional aid for two consecutive uh, 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 calendar years. We'll be accepting it from July to December and from January to June. So there's no, if we accept this uh, six month calendar, then we're in the, the resolution that we passed to get out of transitional aid is off the table. Is that correct? No, I the, the state aid that I'm referring to is your what we would term your regular state aid, which is the aid that all municipalities get in, in some amounts. Um, in Trenton, the only exception is that Trenton gets capital city aid in addition to the regular state aid. So that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking okay. about the Comptra, the energy receipts tax, your capital city. Right. I'm not okay. talking about the transition aid program. I'm talking okay. about the regular state aid. All righty. Great. Great. Now, uh, uh, 
thanks for that. Now, the you, other uh, the question I was going to ask you before about the change in the calendar year, would us getting the 36 point some odd million from the federal government under the American Rescue Plan, would that affect this calendar year change? That wouldn't affect the change of change of itself. Obviously, that will have an impact on your budget, which which the administration can speak to you about. But that won't. Uh, that would not. Um, that would be separate and apart from a change in your fiscal year, because you would have you would have the influx of that money no matter which fiscal year uh, you. If you continue on the state fiscal year cycle, you would still have that inflow of money. If you transition to the to the calendar year cycle, you would still have that inflow of money. So it's kind of neutral. Okay, so I thank you, and um, I wanted to um, I wanted to be able to send you um, questions that the public may have, or do the body want the public to be able to answer the questions themselves? I don't think that's appropriate. I, I personally don't think that's appropriate. I mean, if people want to ask the questions so, to them directly, they can. But, uh, you know, we have a council for a reason. If, uh, you know, we're the elected representatives, if people want to ask okay, questions so we would their own time. The, we would, so you would like to fill the questions? You would like them to submit their questions to Mr. Collins? Send them over? I, I mean, I think that if they have questions, they can contact uh the uh, dca directly but you know quite frankly uh we're the body that's charged with making decisions and uh you know during this process i think it would only be appropriate to leave the questions during this session uh in in this setting for us all right thank you uh wait a minute uh council mcbride may i comment yeah. on that yes I think uh, DCA, they're a state entity, they're a government entity. They are also paid by taxpayers. And, and, they, and they gave the presentation because they knew it was a public forum. Um, and I think that I see it done across a lot of other municipalities. People, we got 85 residents on this phone. They are the, res they are the taxpayers of the city. The, the, the budget is their money. They should be able to, uh, they should be able to address DCA directly. And uh, DCA should be cordial enough to answer their questions. And I think this is the appropriate forum to do that in. Thank you. I just want to say for the record that no, 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 we we're don't not have gonna, a public site in Trenton. Yes, we're not going to go back and forth, Councilman. We're just going to um, um, ask Miss uh, uh, Miss Mead if she uh, if she would like to, or Mr. Lip said if they would like to fill some of the public's questions. Or do you want them to submit the questions through Mr. Um, Conlin? Uh, I mean, I have no problem answering any questions that I can. All righty. So um, I'll put it to the to the a motion on the floor for the council to make that decision. Um, um, the motion that I would like to put on the floor is that if the council members would like the public to be able to ask uh, question we will not give them 10 minutes we will give them three minutes um, to ask uh, DCA um, questions pertaining to the calendar year changing from a year to the six-month calendar year if um, if the council would like to they could uh, we would make a motion I'm making a motion for that vote I have a motion from Council President McBride to open up a public portion for three minutes per person. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Second, second by Mr. Rodriguez. And I'll call the roll. Mr. Blakely? No. Mr. Blakely votes nay. Ms. Caldwell Wilson? Yes. Ms. Caldwell Wilson votes aye. Mr. Harrison? Yes. Mr. Harrison votes aye. Mr. Michelle? One more time, sir. Yes. Thank you, sir. Mr. Michelle votes aye. Mr. Rodriguez? Yes. Mr. Rodriguez votes aye. Ms. Vaughn? Yes. Ms. Vaughn votes aye. Council President McBride? Yes. Right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to open a public portion for uh, the presentation tonight to ask DLGS 
Uh, Ms. Mead from DLGS, uh, a couple of questions. Uh, please, one, be very respectful. This is our guest. Two, please uh, keep your, uh, don't make statements. This is just for questions with regard to that. So we're, we're kind of limiting it to questions. That was the motion. Three, you have three minutes to get your questions out. Uh, would anybody like to be recognized for a public portion with regard to the public presentation? And please limit your topic to that. Any questions from the gallery? Anybody seeking recognition from the council for, uh, for this? Please speak up if you're on the phone. Any, once, once again, any questions uh, for DLGS for the presentation for switching from the state uh, fiscal year to the state calendar year, as explained? Uh, Council President, we have Ms. Sherry Garrett. Yes, Ms. Garrett has uh, three minutes, Ms. Garrett. <coughs> Thank you, Council President. Uh, my question um, in regards to the... Um, the monies that come in that we're, we're talking about the contra and the um, the other ten thousand dollars a year that was uh, approved by the assembly, uh, those areas of the money which was thirty six million. Um, once we get that those funds for the six months and then for the for the rest of the twenty twenty two, is that it? So once we we're only getting these funds because of the. My question is, can you confirm? We're getting those funds because of the moving from a state fiscal year to a calendar year. So that's only going to happen this one time in the transition. Is what is that going to happen one time in the transition? And if it does, um, if we do accept that money, that means the following year or what? When will be the next time we will be getting that aid again? That's the question. So, you know, that it, my, my concern is, is, um, is for us to understand how we're, we're supposed to manage those funds until we, till we are, um, we pass the period that we can continue receiving those funds that was out with this, uh, uh, legislatively, uh, allocated to the city of Trenton. Um, that's what, do I, uh, just to get that question answered or yes, do I yes. keep asking? No, 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 okay. that's the question. Um, the, the state aid that I was referring to, which is roughly $69 million a year, is the city's normal state aid. Um, so this is state aid that the city of Trenton gets every year. It's comprised of the Consolidated Municipal Tax Relief Act, Energy, Energy Receipts Act, the Capital City Funds, which again are unique to, to Trenton, and a couple of other very small pockets of money. But this, this is just, so I can't promise you that those funds will be available. It's, that is not my decision. But these are the annual state aid payments that the city of Trenton gets every year and has for many years and likely will continue to get into the future unless the legislature change, changes it. But these are the, the state aid funds that every, every town, every municipality in New Jersey, with the exception of the capital city, which only goes to Trenton, um, every municipality gets their portion of these funds every year. So nothing is changing. Those funds will are not are going to go away because of this change to a calendar year. That's not my question. My, my question was, once we receive the $69 million for, for the transitional portion and for the regular calendar year, it was just continue, like you just stated, um, for the following. When will be the next time we get the funds? Really, it will answer the question. Those funds are given annually between... No, 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 no. Once we've received the, 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 the 69 for the transitional portion and then for the regular calendar year for 2021, when will be the next time? The next tw for 2022, it will continue, even though we're getting it twice? You would get it in, in the fall, the summer, between August and December of 2021. Between August and December of 2022, that's the 18-month period, and then the next payment would be in the calendar year 2023, which would also be given between August and December of 2023. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Is there anyone else, Mr. Collin? 
Uh, anybody else wish to be recognized for public portion? If you're on a phone and you're muted, you can dial star six to unmute yourself or hit the little microphone. Uh, does anybody else wish to be recognized by the Trenton City Council uh, to uh, ask questions of DLGS for the transition from fiscal year to calendar year? I move to close this session. I have a motion by Mr. Blakely to close the session. Do I have a second? Yes, I, I second it. I don't see any more hands. Yes, ma'am. All in favor. <laughs> Uh, so ordered. Public portion is closed. Thank you very much for your presentation, Ms. Mead. Uh, I, would, I would like to take this time to thank Ms. Mead and um, Mr. Lipset for coming out and um, doing their presentation. Thanks again. And if we have any questions, we'll um, contact Mr. Lipset through Mr. Conlon. Thank you so much. Terrific. Thank you very much, Council President. We appreciate your time tonight. Thank you, Council President. Thank you, Mr. Lipset. Okay, Mr. Collins, we may continue with our uh, regular uh, conference. Yes, ma'am. So uh, we're going to go once again, 23 communications and petitions on the docket. Uh, there are no reports. The uh, financial report was already given in the month. Uh, there are no second readings and public hearings for tonight. Uh, res uh, ordinance 21-11 was slated for public hearing on June 10th to meet the calendar uh, advertising deadline that was perceived to be. Um, if you'd like, Council President, I can go right into the resolutions. Yes, please do. First, we have City Clerk's Office Resolution 21-194, a resolution of the Trenton City Council endorsing the enactment of the Medicare for All Act. The floor is open. Seeing, seeing uh, no hands from the Council, we will add that to the consent agenda. Yes, ma'am. Next, we have resolutions to the Department of Administration, Adam E. Cruz, Business Administrator. First, we have resolution 21-195, a resolution authorizing the application and acceptance of grant funds from the New Jersey Department of Community Affairs for Anti-Violence Out-of-School Anti-Violence Initiative Restorative Justice Program. Would you like to move to the consent agenda? Yes. Thank you, ma'am. Next, we have Resolution 21-196, a resolution authorizing the application and acceptance of award from the New Jersey, New Jersey Department of Community Affairs Mercer County Reentry re Pilot Program. The floor is open. Seeing no hands from the council, we can add it to the consent agenda. Yes, ma'am. Next, we have resolutions from the Department of Law, West Bridges Acting Director. First, we have Resolution 21-169, a resolution authorizing an amendment to the contract with the Law Office of Parker McKay, Attorneys at Law, 9000 Mid-Atlantic Drive, Suite 300, P.O. Box 5054, Mount Laurel, New Jersey, 08054-1539, to provide continued professional legal services regarding legal representation in regards to general municipal and other legal matters in an amount not to exceed $30,000. Mr. Con Mr. Conlin, can I ask Mr. Um um, uh, Mr. Cruz to table 21-169 until we are able to um, uh, either get something from the mayor or, or get another person from the law department to sign the resolution, please. Until we get a letter from the mayor asking um, to bring um, to deal with the signatures on the resolutions. Mr. Cruz, did you want to pull it? Um, Madam President, will it suffice if we have an attorney tomorrow come to the clerk's office and sign oh, off yes. on them? That would be that would be just fine, Mr. Great. Mr. Uh, Cruz. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. I appreciate that. Would you like me to roll call it for now, ma'am? Um, yeah. No, he's Madam gonna, President, um, can we roll they, call it? For, okay. Yes. I, I like to see. I like to to get some documentation what is it that these people are doing where uh, why are we have to pay an extra thirty thousand dollars to them but you know we never get reports from these attorneys nothing you know so we are paying for a service but we don't all we uh, get is request to increase the payment that's all i like to get something dating. so, so what is this money going to go for Noted, ma'am. Noted for the record. Would you like me to proceed? Or, Mr. or are there any other questions on the floor? No, if Ms. I have to make sure that Councilman Rodriguez is finished, is finished with his concern. Well, I'm, fin I'm finished. I just want to roll call. Okay, thank you. Go right ahead, Mr. Conlon. 
Uh, next, we have Resolution 21-197, a resolution authorizing the settlement of an administrative law matter of Terrence Bailey versus City of Trenton, the total amount of $112,000, and that will have to be roll called. Okay. Uh, next, we have Resolution 21-198, a resolution, uh, this is the Department of Police, you'll call it Director. Resolution 21-198, a resolution accepting a bid and awarding a contract to Stratus Technologies for annual maintenance and support for the Stratus service at Trenton Police for a period of two years from October 30th, 2020 to October 29th, 2023 in an amount not to exceed $38,000 per year through bid 2020-37. And I do have to ask um, Mr. Cruz if that's a typo. Let me just check the resolution. It might be a typo on our end. Based on um, no, it has a It's a three-year date. It says a two-year bid. Mm -hmm. So let's uh, correct that before Thursday. Uh, Madam President, if there's a typo, we can yeah, we can take care of it. But it does say two years. Yeah, it says two year years. period there in the, in the uh, title. The DCA signed off on two twenty-two. Uh, Madam President, DCA signed off on 2022. Yeah. Okay, so we have to correct that. It can't move forward with 223 if DCA only allowed it. Councilman Rodriguez. Uh, you just say, you know, I, I have a question about this. You know, this I see this company is in Dublin, Ireland. Doesn't say anything about a subsidiary here in New Jersey, at least in New Jersey. You know how they do? How are they going to do those services from Ireland? I don't see anything. Usually they have somebody is that does it in New Jersey or Pennsylvania. How are they going to trans? How are they, are they going to do any services from way out there? That would be for um, Director Coley. I like to know, you know, why, why <laughs> there is nobody in the U.S. that could do these type of services. Uh, Madam President, if I may, the... I'm, on, I'm, I'm sorry. Was the question for me, uh, Madam President? Or yes, yes, it was for you, Director. Um, okay. Um, well, the the reason why. Um, that particular company services the servers is because that's where the original um, service came from. So you want to have some continuity whenever you're dealing with um, technology. And this is the company that has been servicing those particular servers um, since way before I came on. You don't want to start changing things now because you would have to end up start changing servers and other components that we can't afford to do right now. But how do they... How do they do their services? Through the phone, electronic, how? From Dublin, um, Dublin. Councilman, with most technology now, everything is, is done remotely, and when it can't be repaired remotely, then they come on site and make the repairs. <laughs> okay. Thank you. No problem. All righty, so that could be added to the consent See, agenda. I got on a different time. Um, there's someone, someone needs to mute because their phone is ringing and we hear your call. So, now, Council President, that item has been added to the consent agenda. Would you like me to proceed? Yes. Next, we have Resolution 21-199, a resolution approving the Memorandum of Understanding between the Prince Trenton Police Department and the College of New Jersey for the shared services of the Trenton RISE project. Uh, I, I have comments about that. Go right ahead, Council. Yes, uh, that, uh, uh, half of the money is a million dollars and half, 500,000 are going to go to, uh, to the College of New Jersey or some type of assessment. Uh, if I am not mistaken, the College of New Jersey was taking the court uh, about five, six years ago uh, due to the fact that, that they had no services in Trenton or other uh, communities, uh, low-income communities in Mercer County. And they were forced by law, by the court, 
to start these little programs they have for the uh, risk youth, supposedly. Uh, they are located in, in, in Ewing. Uh, I'd like to know what is what what are they doing now, this rice rice project? Where is the rice project located? Is it is there is a Trenton location? What is it that they do? You know, because I have I never heard of this rice project. Uh, I'd like to know what that rice project is, so I could uh, refer your kids to it. That would be for the police director, Director Coley. Okay. Councilman Rodriguez, it would, the kids that will be serviced will be from um, Trenton. Um, the college, as you stated, is not located in Trenton, but they have been designated as the, as the people, the repository. Who's being rude? And my apologies, Director. I accidentally muted you because I thought you were the party that was at in recognition. So, Director, you're going to have to unmute yourself. I apologize for that. Uh, it is... Uh, It'd be star six to unmute yourself or on the smartphone. I heard the ringing. I thought it was somebody interfering and I didn't recognize your number, ma'am. Uh, if you can't unmute yourself, you'd have to back out of the meeting and come back in. That is, that is my, uh, my apology. There you go. You're unmuted now. Okay. I think I'm back. You are. Um, yes, you're back. Okay. All right. So the children um, that will be serviced will be from Trenton. However, um, the college because of the project they are the ones who will be um, the repository if you will for lack of a better term of where all the information will go the data will be um, analyzed and then come up with a, um, a strategy as to how we can service everyone better so that's why the um, college is involved um, i did not know the history of the college but if you would like for me to pull that until we can get a better understanding and make sure this is a relationship that we want to enter into then i can certainly do that the more details on what is that rice project, you know, uh, how how many uh, uh, youth have been benefiting out of it. I, get, I I believe that's a program they have right now. Okay. So, well, uh, well, the answer the answer to your question is that how many kids prior to now? I don't have an answer for that. Uh, that I, have, I, I, have, I like to know about that before because it's it's half a million dollars. It's half yes. of the money that we're gonna get. You know, and uh, before that, we uh, before you came in, we had the I believe it was the youth start program in Trenton. That right. was cancer that was given to uh, Mercer Street friends. The money is with a different name. I don't know what's going on with that program, but you know, we cannot continue on giving the money away to entities and not uh, tracing that money. See. What are we getting for that money? So, so, council, so Councilman um, Rodriguez, the only money that we would be able to account for is, is the portion that is given to um, the city, and then we would have to report how many children we were able to assist with that and how we were able to assist. Um, in terms of the money that's given to um, the college, we would not be able to um, to track that, but I believe I have Sergeant Durlacher on the um phone and she's our grant manager so um if there's something that she can add to this i ask that she be allowed to speak now well if you're going to pull it you could pull it and then you send us have her send us uh a council a report okay so um, program is I, i'm here director wait wait but uh, sergeant okay um so Sergeant Durlacher is on the phone, um, but if you would rather have the um, report, then we can do that. I don't believe that this is time sensitive, but she would be able to tell us that. Uh, can, 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 can she send us a report? A I actually report. attached the report into the backup, but I will resend it again tomorrow. Um, we Thank have, you. We've tracked the last two years, so you can see all the um, success we've had there. Councilman Rodriguez, are you finished? Well, uh, roll call it. Roll call it. This, uh, Mr. Collins, roll call uh, it. Call it uh, yes, ma'am. Noted for the record. This would be marked for roll call. Yes. Council Member Vaughn. Yes. Um, 
thank you, um, uh, Police Director Coley and uh, Sergeant Durlacher. So I, my question is, I, I, I want to hear more about the kids that, how, what, what are they age, what are the ages that are part of that police program? I hear a lot of background conversation, Mr. Conlon. So, um, uh, uh, Ms. Ms. Derlacher, what are the ages of the young folks who are who are benefiting from that program and who have attended over time? Yes, ma'am. The ages are 12 to 18. 12 to 18. Um, and what kind of activities are they uh, exposed to? Uh, we are they do educational or uh, recreational. Um, all of it. We do traditional, non-traditional programming. Mm -hmm. uh, we do music, dance. Um, we have parent parents come in on Saturday. We have after-school programming, um, food. Um, they're doing construction on the North Ward Community Center. We'll also have washers, dryers, um, and they're basically building around all the youth needs. So this this is one of your community um, community engagement programs offered by the Trent Police Department. Yes, ma'am. And the College of New Jersey, it's the, um, the their um, PhD, which I'm not sure if he's on, Stuart Rowe, but they provide also mental health. We do biopsychosocial intakes on all the youth when they come in. We assess homelessness, hopefulness, um, literacy. We do all these intakes, and then we continue to do the intakes every three months to assess their progress. Okay. And um, one of the statistics that I would love to know about the program is uh, um, I know it's attached to your report. Um, I guess the council members didn't read it. Um, is that this, one of the statistics is uh, how, what are the outcomes after, for, for the young people who have attended the program? Do they end up getting jobs? Do they end up going to college? Um, or they're just left out into the street to join gangs and participating in the massive shootings that have been going around the city and end up being incarcerated? So I want to know what are the outcomes? Have we been successful in getting these uh, young people through these type of programs in the police department and getting them off the street, getting them into colleges, getting them into jobs, right? Have the city even hired any of them? Have they hired, have, have the police department hired any of these uh, 18, 17 year olds that have gone through the program and have they, any of them become police, uh, police, um, policemen and, or women? So, I, you know, those are the type of outcomes that I would be looking for and wanting to see in the police department over time. So, um, have that happened? Ha has that happened, uh, Sergeant? Uh, yes, ma'am. I mean, that's a great question. So, we were up and running for about eight months, and then COVID hit, which restricted the amount of youth that we were allowed to have in the building. Um, but we plan on getting up and running um, as soon as we... Um, can get into our building, but we are planning on summer alternatives based on um, trying to partner with other agencies that can, um, sorry, that's my dogs, um, based on other agencies that can partner with us so we have um, housing for them. Well, okay. Well, you know, the, 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 the question is about outcomes. Sure. And well, if we're having, well, I'm sorry. If we're going to fund these type of programs, and I'm speaking to the police director as well and the police captain who's on the line, if we're going to have these programs, and uh, put young black, I guess a large percentage of them are black and brown uh, uh, youth, um, and some of them young adults if they're 18 years old. Um, if we're, if we're going to put these kids, these young folks in these programs, we, after the program ends, we expect them to either, again, help them go through college, go to trade school, uh, get training for the police and fire department, um, and if that's not happening, then that's a disappointment. Um, and since the program has been uh, established over time, if, I mean, you should have some success stories to tell us about. And, you know, here we are on the, um, today is the anniversary of the death of George Floyd. I, I don't know if uh, anyone realized that or or, or recognize it or acknowledge that we, we didn't acknowledge, acknowledge it yet here in his council, but it is the anniversary of the death of George Floyd. And here is good that we have a resolution like this on the docket that our, our police department is working with the community 
working on police department reform, getting, hopefully, programs like this will have impact in our city against this gun violence because the young people will have jobs, will be able to go to school, and not just only end up in prison or, or shot or murdered. So we need to start putting more funding toward these programs through recreation, through education, through health care, to, to mental, um, mental uh, uh, illness and services, than worried about putting funding towards more policing. So we need to come up with more resources, and I appreciate you, uh, Ms. Ms. Dorlaka and, and, and Council, I mean, um, uh, Director Coley, for the good work that you're doing and continue to do it. And uh, that's all I have to say about that. And, and yes, uh, roll call it. And uh, if you can add that statistic as to the outcomes and where some of your success stories have uh, exist for, for young people who have gone through the program and have they really um, uh, um, uh, 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 ha ha had any successes as a result of it. Thank you. Uh, can Madam I just, oh, sorry. Can I just respond real quick? Um, yes, I mean, I completely agree. That partnership with higher ed is... Yes, uh, uh, Sergeant Derlacher. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, no, uh, thank, you. Mr. thank you. Mr. Conlon, uh, roll call that. Madam President, I have a, a, a point uh, of clarification here. Okay, go uh, right ahead, Councilman. Yes, uh, I just went over that background. It says that the program is running out of 454 uh, North Clinton Avenue. That's a recreation, ce the, uh, recreation center that they are fixing now, supposedly, one that we discussed uh, two weeks ago, uh, that have been, according to Councilman uh, uh, Mars Cardwell, uh, that place has been closed for a while over 10 months. Where are they going in that program right now? And we are still working on it. We have a change order for that building. So how, how are they going to be servicing this uh, youth in a place that is still under reparations and stuff? I don't know what is going on. Well, there haven't been a program there for the past year because this, we have been working on it. It was vacant. Can I? And they're I, counting on that same program. Sir, uh, so we, COVID restrictions shut us down and then construction was supposed to be complete until the change order. Unfortunately, they had, the construction project was bigger, but we still intend to continue summer programming um, and trying to partner with other agencies that have a building for us to use. What, what, what building? Where? What other agency? Uh, uh, I believe we were going to request and meet with um, East Trend Collaborative, which is right down the street, to see if we can share some space with them. They, they've already partnered with us on um, the yes, case. They, they, they have very limited space there. I've been there a lot of times. Most of the summer programming is taking the kids out of town. Well, let's roll call it. Roll call. Mr. Uh, uh, Colin, you put that down for roll call? Yes, okay. ma'am. Um, you may continue, please. Yes, ma'am. Next, we have Resolution 21-200. Uh, Lisa from the Department of Finance, Ron Zelensky, Acting Director. 21-200, resolution providing for the insertion of a special item of revenue in the budget of a municipality pursuant to NJSA 40A, <clears throat> 40 Cap A, colon 4-87, Chapter 159, Public Law of 1950, 1948, in an amount of $14,000. You can uh, consent, put that on the consent agenda. Yes, ma'am. Next, we have Resolution 21-201, a resolution providing for the insertion of a special item of revenue in the budget of a municipality pursuant to NJSA 40 Cap A, colon-487, Chapter 159, Public Law of 1948, in an amount of $36,456,999. Uh, Madam President? Yes. Well, I... <laughs> 
where is that, how is that money going to be used? Where is it going to be allocated? Is this going to be a special account specifically for what the, re the regulations say? How are they going to manage that, those $36 million? That is a question for Mr. Cruz. Hi, yes, Madam President. Good evening and thank you again. Um, uh, Madam President, this resolution is actually for the acceptance, acceptance of the funding that has already been transferred into a city account. The money is already sitting at the bank, and this is actually the way that we um, insert money in the budget, just like we do with any other money that comes in after the budget is adopted. Uh, it doesn't mean that there needs to be a plan to spend the money because we're not spending the money right now. As we are all aware, the federal government finally released the um, the guidelines two weeks ago. We are still are going through the process. We are giving people uh, the highlights of what the money can be used for, and it, it is not our intent to begin spending without being fully knowledgeable as to what this money can be used for. So tonight's resolution is only to accept the funding into the budget, just like we do with any other money that we receive. Okay. Mr. Collin, you may add it to the consent agenda. Yes, ma'am. So no. Yes, ma'am. Next, we have a resolution from the Department of Housing and Economic Development, Benjamin Delisle, Director. First, we have Resolution 21-182, a resolution authorizing the purchase of 24 Fountain Avenue, Block 7012, Lot 28, Trenton, for $37,000, pursuant to the Humboldt Suites Redevelopment Plan. Uh, I have to comment on that. Go right ahead, Councilman. Yeah, there, there was a, a, something that Mr. Delisle sent to Councilwoman Bond that I saw concerning those properties. A, the resolution says that those properties are all city-owned, but according to what Mr. Bond put out, some of them are not. They're still under a private owner's name, in Fountain Avenue. And why a, that, the resolution said that that's a vacant property. It has been vacant for a while, I believe. And uh, why are we paying $36,000 for a vacant property? Uh, do we have a record of tax? Do they have are the taxes up to date? Are the vacant property ordinance a fee up to date on that property? Do the owner own any monies to the city for this property? So, because, you know, if first we, we need to see that, I don't see any of that uh, uh, with this resolution. You know, how much they owe, if they owe, I believe they have to owe because they, they have been vacant for a long time. The, the whole the holes block has been vacant for a long time. Uh, the board knows about it. The council president knows about it. Uh, so why are we paying a person that had abandoned a property in Trenton having done anything to it for years, why do we have to pay them? They should pay us whatever they owe us and pay us for the demolition of it. That's my uh, concern. Thank you. Yes. Um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Conlon, um, I would um, like 21-182 um, roll call based on um, what the councilman is uh well you know is discussing because based on the resolution they want to pay someone that has abandoned property has abandoned their property thirty seven thousand dollars and then they want to pay an additional i believe uh twenty five thousand to demolish it 
<laughs> when property has been abandoned like that, why why would you be given uh, an absentee landlord or someone that have neglected their property and left the blight into the city thirty seven thousand dollars? I do not understand that. I don't understand why you would give them thirty seven thousand and then pay another twenty five thousand. Why don't you take that thirty seven thousand that you were going to pay them and give it to the people that is going to demolish the home? They should not be walking out with $37,000. Their portion of whatever they think they should get should go to the people that we have, the contractors that we hire to demolish the property. And if they own the property, then why would we be paying double if the property is no good, as I stated earlier? Rather than give them thirty-seven thousand, charge them for leaving that blight here in the city. But you can't have it both ways. You cannot pay an absentee landlord for blighted property and then tax the residents in the city of Trenton to demolish it. Council President. Council right President. Ahead. Go right ahead. Yeah, I don't believe they're paying an additional money. I think that 37000 is coming out of two different accounts. Council, Council. Um, Council President, I have a question. Can I address, this is Director Vlad, can I address some of the concerns? Uh, Council President, before uh, are, is she on the line? I'm I'm on the line. I'm looking at the documentation over and over again, trying to see where these two accounts is. The council, well, what was it? I was looking at the back of my packet. But go ahead, uh, Councilwoman Vaughn. Now, I just you know again, uh, before uh, Mr. Delisle speaks, of course, I did do the analysis on the properties, and I actually I rode around the city. To look at them as well and they are in horrible conditions and I've been getting an influx of calls from residents all over the city not just in the West Ward all over the city complaining about these type of homes they need to be addressed we can't continue to drag our feet on them. and there are a lot of concerns we are concerns about hiring local and hiring uh, contracting local on these initiatives because we didn't hire the right contract. Then is the issue, as Council President just pointed out, then is issue of ownership and title, making sure we're legally um, proceeding um, <coughs> and, and compliant with the laws. But everybody knows in these type of situations, uh, you're going to have to, we're going we're to come across a, this type of instance where a homeowner still owns the property and um, and it, it's, it's one property in a block of six others that surround that one property. So you got to do a cost-benefit analysis of, you know, do you pay them and then uh, move on with the whole block? Or do you keep the whole block and that one property standing there because you don't want to pay, what, the 37000 So I will ask my council members to really do the cost assessment, the overall benefit for the project. And the overall benefit for the project on Fountain Avenue exceeds the 37000 that council president is talking about. Okay? So there's no reason to hold up that whole block. If anybody go take a look at, that, look at that block, it is already, it's just decrepit. The people, the, the, the housing, the, 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 the residents on that street want that, want it gone. I even tried to justify it as well. They were like, Ms. Vaughn, those things, those properties have got to go. And I articulated that to Director Delisle. So I'm just saying, do the cost benefit analysis, Council McBride, for once, and know that the cost benefit of, uh, of um, keeping all those homes in that state with that one standing there, because we don't want to come up with $37, uh, it, it does not meet the justification. So, and that's all I'm going to say about that. And each council member, when we put something forward, you should be able to explain it. Thoroughly. If you can't explain it, then you should 
not even a, 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 a be a bottleneck about it. So, um, and that's all I'm going to say about Madam that. Madam President, it, it, if Madam I could. President, I have to say something about this because uh, my question was, are the taxes up to date in that property? Is the money, the fee for the vacant property ordinance that we have, is it up to date? That's what I'm asking for, because before, if that's up to date, if they have been keeping that specific property in good shape, but it's not. I know, I saw the photos. They are not having, they have, that property has been kept for years. Why should we uh, reward an absentee landlord from you in give her $37,000? Why? We first we have to analyze. That's the the analysis we have to do. Do they owe the city any money? Have they been paying that that uh, that fee, Mister Dilal? Can you ask answer that? Yeah. Yes, Councilman. At the we uh, this thirty seven thousand dollars was based on an appraisal of the property. I ordered an appraisal of the property because at the time when we first started looking at it, they were. Where is the appraisal? I looked for it and I didn't see it. Oh, the, I'm happy to send it to you. I thought it was in, uh, oh, forwarded oh, along. Oh. I, I'd you be happy to send it. But if I could, why. Councilman, Councilman, if I could finish. At that time, the taxes were current on the property. So a, as is any real estate transaction, when we get to the closing table, we will make sure that all uh, assessments, whether taxes, water, or other fees, or liens on the property are satisfied. So the 37,000 would be the maximum amount based on what the, the property was valued at. And the reason why we do that, if we otherwise, I, I don't know how else to, to assess or, or acquire a property, uh, but doing an appraisal and offering fair market value to the, to the current owner. Okay, so, so Mr. <laughs> so Mr. Delisle. Well, fair market value, God, that's a joke. <laughs> so Mr. Delisle. Well, you know, and Councilman, that's as established by a certified appraiser. Dilapidated home is a joke. So, oh. so Mr. Delisle, you you uh, you came to me, and you said that you wanted to do eminent domain on people's homes that were living in the property. Living. Oh, no, Councilwoman, I never said such a thing to yeah, you. Yeah, you did. Now, my thing to you is, you said do. Uh, uh, the 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 um you look at all of the um you you look at all of the above well when you have an absentee landlord and you saying that thirty seven thousand dollars a blighted home is worth thirty seven thousand dollars um sub subtracting the um taxes and and water bill or whatever but my my problem is you don't have to hold up a whole block because if there's an absentee landlord, then there is ways to take that property through the court system and through the process that they could not get 37000 27000 because at the end of the day, it's $62,000, whether the 37000 is coming out of one, one trust and the 25000 is coming out of the $11 million, no matter how you look at it. Is sixty two thousand dollars, and so all I'm saying is, you know, have have you exhausted all of the avenues for that property before you talk about uh, paying an absentee landlord for leaving blighted property here in the city, and are you setting precedents when you begin to pay them when you could exhaust all avenues to get that property? That's my point. So, Councilwoman, just to, just to clarify, the, the oh, total... uh, I, uh, I'm uh, send, just send me the appraiser. That's all. Uh, happy to, I, Councilman. I, I don't need any more. Just send me the appraiser. I'd uh, like to see that appraiser. Councilman, I'm going to. I'd like to respond. I, I was a real estate uh, agent. I am very familiar with appraisers. All right, we may keep uh, it moving, Council, Mr. Councilman. Council, 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 Council President, if I could just answer your question, the thirty-seven thousand is the total amount. Twenty-five thousand is coming from the NRP funds, the eleven and a half million dollar fund that you're referring to. The balance is from the vacant properties, so the total is thirty-seven. It is not additive of twenty-five plus thirty-seven. It is not sixty-two. 
Thank, thank. I appreciate that. It will be. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Um, Delisle. Mr. Collins, we'll make it to you. Yes, ma'am. Next, we have resolution 21 186, a resolution authorizing change order three to the contract with Levy Construction Company, Inc., for bid 2020 49 renovation of the Reading Senior Recreation Center, 15 Ringgold Street, Trenton, New Jersey. Is that the um, Reading Center? Yes, ma'am. That's a change order that was uh, tabled from the last meeting, I believe. Yes. I read, um, I read Mr. Stevenson's report. Thank you, Mr. Stevenson, for that report. If no one wants to uh, roll call it, you may add that to the consent agenda. Yes, ma'am. Next, we have Resolution 21-102, a resolution authorizing payment for a contract with Carroll Group Inc., ordered on an emergency basis for demolition services in the city of Trent, in the amount of $50,200. Well, I have... Something to say about that one question: Why fifty thousand dollars to demolish a property? One property. I thought it was a huge building, but I just saw a, a, a photo of it, of it that was published, and it was just one property. Fifty thousand dollars to demolish one property. Councilman, um, thank you for pointing that out because I think what you're illustrating is what uh, Councilman Vaughn was pointing out. This is a single property um, that's attached, and we need to do sidewall repairs and do very careful hand demolition. So that's why it's 50000 for one. To save that 24 fountain from the previous one, we would have to have done that same exercise on either side of it, right? So the premium for this sidewall repair or this hand demolition for attached structures can easily be fifteen dollars to $20,000. That's why it's fifty for this one. So to save that one at twenty four. dollars fountain for $37,000 could have cost the city $40,000 in additional demolition costs on either side. So that is why these costs are so exorbitant. In addition, it was done on an emergency basis because of the, 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 the fire that was there. So you're, when you're paying on an emergency basis, you, you often pay higher amounts. We did get four proposals for uh, this work uh, or quotes from contractors, and this was the lowest of the four that were received. <laughs> There it goes. Usually, we pay about thirty to from twenty-eight to to thirty-five thousand dollars for those type of where they have to be stabilized in both sides. Yes, we usually pay that. I remember one four twenty-five was Hanover was done that way, and uh, but now they went up up in price. With fifty thousand dollars, we could probably repair that house a little bit more, make it new, make it habitable. Councilman, we certainly are evaluating that very thing because, as you point out, fifty thousand is a lot to take down an attached structure. In this particular instance, it wasn't possible. The house had been had a fire and it was collapsing. Bricks were falling, you know, into the into the sidewalk into the street. But you, but your point is well taken. That at fifty thousand dollars. You know, should we be looking at at rehabbing properties? In this instance, it was not possible. Yes, yes, Mr. Delay. I hope you start working on the 400 block of West Hanover, 418 to 428 West Hanover. Thank you. Alrighty. If um, did you want to roll call that, Mr. Uh, uh, Councilman Rodriguez? Oh yes, because I'm going to vote no to it. All right, Mr. Collin, we may continue. So noted, ma'am. Uh, next, we have Resolution 21-203, Resolution approving the third substantial amendment to the fiscal year 2019 annual action plan beginning July, 3rd, July 1, 2019 through June 30th, 2020. If there's no one wants to speak to that, we'll... we'll make that part of the consent agenda. Yes, ma'am. Oh, no, no, no. It, it, that, that's because someone doesn't respond. I, I would like to have that roll call. Okay, you have to tell me, uh, Councilwoman. I okay. Well, okay, please roll call that one. That's the, that's the uh, calendar year one, if I heard correctly? No, ma'am. This is for a this is for an amendment to the annual action plan uh, for <clears throat> 
I'm sorry. Hold up. I'm sorry. I didn't hear that, uh, Mr. Collins. Uh, it's, it's an amendment to the HUD action plan for fiscal year 2019. It's the third substantial amendment. I believe it's a part of the coronavirus. And yeah, I, I, I saw yeah. that, and uh, I did read through that, and it is substantial, and um, I don't under really understand. Mr. Delisle, can you speak to that, why the monies had to be transferred across programs? And, and um, yeah, across programs. But you didn't break it down as to who got the money, who, who, I mean, how you allocate the money. You just said that you're reallocating across programs. Um, how did we get it, how did we get it wrong, I guess? So, Councilwoman, it was, there is an attachment to the resolution which does break down all the, um, the funding, but uh, it's not that we got it wrong, we got another tranche of funding. So we need to allocate this additional money that we received from HUD. Um, and uh, there is some that's being reprogrammed, um, and that's all identified in the, in the, um, in the attachment. Um, but, uh, you know, as, as we, we first laid it out, we had uh, what we thought was going to be the budget. You know, some time's gone by, and we'd like to reallocate it for, dish, for different funding uh, and, and priorities. The why, and the reason why I say that is because I saw some of the funding. Mm -hmm. And again, as you know, there are plenty of residents who are not getting this funding to, to, for their, for their uh, initiatives that that money was intended for. So where is the money going? To which program? Because it's not going to the residents. Council, Councilwoman, I, I don't know to which you're referring, but it is going to the residents. I mean, it's going to a lot of uh, food programs and rent relief and utility relief programs. That yeah, 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 yeah. Those those type of programs where um, where it's what I would call bundled programs, right? They're going right. to oh yeah, we're going to the YMCA because they gave you know they give out food, um, you know, um, uh, but. We don't see it going to individual families and, and, and individuals of low and moderate income. So I, I'm concerned about that. And it needs to be, quite frankly, investigated. Because when these organizations take that money and they get to say, you know, in the bundle report, oh, we, we, we got $400,000 and we used it for food. And they can't give it. They can't tell us who they fed, right? Oh, any oh, given oh, day. Council, Councilman, that's not true. It's we have a dashboard with all the metrics of the the number of people served uh, that's posted on the city's website. Yeah, yeah, um, I understand. That I understand that, that's publicly was, available. Yeah, We're very transparent on who we serve. My, my my question is, I re, I review that stuff. Uh, 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 what I'm saying to you is, I don't see it going to a low income and a moderate income family. Okay, I don't see it. And if you can give me that report, please do. Um, and they're not seeing it because I got complaints from many of the residents across the city who are who fit that role, who have applied to the program, and for whatever reason have been rejected. So, and uh, and this has been going on for quite some time. So uh, we need to do we need to do better there, Mr. Delisle. Um, I don't know who's running these programs, but that money and me speaking to HUD, and uh, I'm telling you that we don't we are not getting that money down to the people. I'm not talking about organizations who say they're doing all this stuff that provide those stats to you. They can they can make up any old stat. Nobody's auditing them. Nobody's going over and provide, providing that oversight unless you go to the uh, HUD uh, uh, Office of Investigative um, uh, Inspector General and ask them to investigate. Nobody goes there and, and, and says, how many uh, plates did the Y uh, serve on Saturday and to whom? Where, where's, the, where's the oversight? So I, I can't validate those numbers. So all that, but I can validate whether or not an individual, a resident, got a check or, or got their home fixed. I could validate that. And those numbers you don't have on your website. Okay, and you could tell you can tell this council how many addresses uh, of, of seniors who uh, and homeowners who are low com low income and qualify have been fixed. Yeah, give me those numbers. So that's what I'm talking about. So yeah, I, I please have that um, 
uh, uh, that uh, resolution uh, roll call? It's already been noted, ma'am. And if you can give me those numbers, Mr. Delisle, give them to me, on individuals, homes in the city that has been remediated and approved. Okay? Continue, Mr. Cromwell. Yes, next we have resolutions of the Department of Recreation, Natural Resources, and Culture, Maria Richardson, Director. First, we have resolution 21-204, resolution authorizing the city of Trenton to apply and accept a grant from the state of New Jersey Department of Agriculture fiscal year 2022 summer food service program in the amount of $218,501.80 for the provision of breakfast and lunch for a minimum of 1,745 children in Trenton. Uh, consent, consent agenda, please. Next, we have resolutions from the Department of Public Work well, to accept a grant for the summer feed program. Can I just ask um, Maria to make sure uh, uh, that um, when she gets the menu, she forward the menu to me because um, you know, in prior years we've had a problem with them sending complete sugar diets to the city. And so we always check the menu over to make sure they have like some nice cereal or uh, some bagels, something that's not full of sugar. So if um, she could forward over the uh, summer feed menu to me, I'd appreciate it. Uh, Councilwoman McBride, this is Maria. May I speak? Yes, yes, definitely. Yes, I will be forwarding the uh, the menu to you. It has been already uh, approved by the state, but I will forward to you tomorrow. Thanks, I appreciate that. My pleasure. Mm -hmm. uh, Council President, would you like me to proceed? Yes, definitely. Um, Mr. Onitary is not here, so is Mr. Cruz um, going to, is there someone from his office here? Uh, Sam Tom, or is Mr. Cruz going to stand in? Well, I we guess we'll figure that out when we get through the questions. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, Mr. Anatiri uh, is on. Uh, we text uh, a little bit ago. Oh, I thought he was on vacation. My apology. Okay. Uh, first, we have resolution 21-191, a resolution exercising the option to extend the contract for an additional two years awarded to TEC Elevator, Inc. for the elevator preventative maintenance and material and equipment repair and replacement from August, 2020, August 2nd, 2021 to August 1st, 2023 in an amount not to exceed $34,470 per year for two years through bid 2019-31. If no questions, we may um, put that in. The consent agenda. Uh, um, Council Council President, President, Councilwoman Carwell Wilson, then Councilwoman Vaughn. Yeah, um, the resolution says um, the contract dates are conflicting with the attach, attachment from the Department of Community Affairs. It says the term of contract July 2021 to June. 2022 and July 2022 to June 2023. But this says from August to August. So there's two different dates. Mr. Cruz, Mr. Onateri. Uh, Madam, uh, Madam President, uh, Mr. Onateri is on and he's asking if he could, uh, if uh, yes. If we can hear him, Mr. Clark, can you hear him? I cannot. So, Mr. Cruz, this is the, I guess, the waiver from DCA. So, 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 uh, so, Mr. Terry is having a problem um, uh, getting on. Uh, Mr. Collin, could you try to find out what that problem is? Sure. If, if, if he's having a problem, the best thing to do, Mr. Onateri, is to disconnect and rejoin the meeting. Okay. All righty. Uh, uh, Council President, can I, I ask a quick Ms. question? Ms. Wait, I no, Councilwoman Carwell Wilson was asking Mr. I'm Cruz a question. An so let him um, answer her question, and then we'll move. Uh, yes, Council uh, Council Vice President, I do see the uh, the the two different date on the resolution and on the waiver yeah. and this is why I was hopeful to hear if Mr. Anatiri uh, could fill us in as to that um, well I think it's actually one month difference 
uh, from July and August. Right. It, it's a one month difference. So why would why would that be? Why would they have two different dates? Uh, I'm, I'm waiting for Mr. Anotiri to respond. Okay. I guess I'm, I guess we will not be hearing a response, uh, Council uh, Vice President. If you may, um, I can check uh, tomorrow with the purchasing agent, and I will clarify. If not, I will pull this resolution by Thursday. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Council President. Yes. Member. Go right ahead, Councilwoman Vaughn. I just have a quick comment, really about the previous resolution about the uh, the, the uh, afternoon lunches, the summer lunches program, if I can. And my comment is, uh, Director Richardson stated that, oh, the state has already, you asked to see the menu, um, and, and uh, the director responded that the state had already approved the menu. So is there an opportunity for that menu to be changed? In the event that council president you receive it and, and find it unsatisfactory? Uh, Ms. Ms. Richardson, is there an opportunity for that menu to be changed? May I approach? Yes, definitely. Yes. Thank you. Yes, there is. <clears throat> Excuse me. There is an opportunity to be changed. Um, I neglected to mention when I said that the state has already approved it is that when I submit the application for funding, I need to submit a menu to the state and it has to be satisfactory to the Department of Agriculture before they even accept the application. But if I send it to Councilwoman McBride and she decides that she would like to see a different menu, then I need to submit it again to the state for their approval. But yes, uh, in the past, Councilwoman McBride has suggested changes in the menu, and it has been done. Okay. And, you know, I respect both, both you and Council President McBride about this menu thing. However, you guys are not certified nutritionalists, so you wouldn't know what proper nutrition, uh, some of the food content, and, and why the state approved what they have approved. And to that end, because you guys aren't the experts in that space, I will ask Ms. Adel, uh, Adela Lopez, our, our, our doctor Adela Lopez, to, to, uh, to give us her role since she's the Director of Health and Human Services in the city. So does she have any input into the nutritional content of the summer um, menu for our, for our kids? Um, no, not in the past. And uh, uh, Dr. Lopez, I don't think that she's a nutritionist either. But the Department of Agriculture provides uh, no, 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 where no, no, the no, menu. Miss Richardson, Dr. Lopez is the Department of Health and Human Services. So she has direct con con contact with this U the State Department of Health. So they were absolutely. They do have nutritionists, and they do, and they and she can help and provide us that expertise to that menu. Absolutely. Okay. Um, the application. So I know she hasn't done it in the, the past. She hasn't done it in the past, but we do have that expertise. We do have that expertise in Dr. Lopez, and she does have that direct contact with the State Department of Health, which does have which. They sign off and approve nutritional um, uh, menus for schools and, and for kids all no, over the state. Uh, the Department of Agriculture, and well, that no, is exactly the entity question. that I am working with. You, you, you're, not asking, you're not understanding my comment or my question, Ms. Richardson. Okay. We're trying to get nutritional meals for our kids. Of course, you, 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 you certainly don't have the expertise, and certainly parks and recreation, that's not a department that would have that expertise. You don't have nutritionists in that department. But the Health and Human Services Department, it does have that level. Or if they don't have it, they have the, the network, and they can go out and get it. So I'm just asking, can Ms. Ms. Uh, Lopez chime in here? Is she still on the line, or did she drop off? 
No, but this is this is this is this is um where we are. We we've, we've always went over the menu. The state agricultural department determines what goes and what doesn't. And so if I make a recommendation to take some of the sugar out of the diet, if they feel as though their menu is sufficient, they will leave it. If they feel as though I've made a legitimate concern, they'll remove it. So it doesn't take a rocket scientist to do that. And so um, we can um, move on. Maria, send me the menu as you have in the past, and I will look at it, and I'll suggest my changes. And if the Department of Agriculture wants to uphold those changes, if there's any that I make, they will. If they don't, then so be it. Um, okay, but Council President, Council President, I would like that roll call, and I would like the Department of Health and Human Services to chime in on there. Well, all right. They can um, answer you in writing. We're going to move on. We have a lot of ground to cover, Mr. Collins. So noted, record uh, 2104 has been roll called, has moved and moved to the roll call. Uh, we are still on 21-191 <coughs> for TEC elevator. Uh, it was somebody, you did mention the consent agenda, but then we went backwards. So uh, do we still want to put that on the consent? Which one? 21-191 for TEC elevator. That was part of the consent agenda. Well, we we did we were, but then Council Vice President also wanted to speak, and when she was speaking, we went backwards. Then, so I believe Council Vice President wanted the floor for someone. The one ninety one. I need to know which is the actual contract year. What what is August to August, or if it's July to July? Right. So are we going to different dates? I thought so, Mr. Cruz answered that. Excuse me, Mr. Collins. No, we I didn't. Mr. Cruz said that he would get back Mr. to Mr. Cruz said he would he would look it up and it, and then if they had to change it, he would pull it. Okay, so but for now we're leaving it on the consent agenda. I just want to clarify. Yeah. Council Council Vice Chair, do you want to roll call it if it's not if he doesn't get back to you with the information? Yeah, okay. So roll call that if Mr. Cruz doesn't have the um, information that the vice chair is looking for okay. um, by tomorrow. Okay, uh, next we have resolution 21-205, a resolution accepting a bid and awarding contract to Lima Charlie Construction, Inc. for the reconstruction of Stuyvesant Avenue from Parkside Avenue to City Line from May 14, 2021 to May 13, 2022, amount not to exceed $1,124,124 through bid 2021 14. Floor is open. If there's no questions, this could be a part of the consent agenda. Yes, ma'am. So noted. Next, we have resolution 21 207. A resolution awarding a contract to CNM Auto Parts Inc. for the purchase of non-OEM auto parts and accessories for light duty vehicles for various departments and divisions awarded through New Jersey State Contract Number T27618659 for a period of one year from May 15, 2021 to February 25, 2022, and it not to exceed $45,000. Which which resolution do you have? Because I look at 206. This is oh. This is 21 205. Okay. How would you like to proceed, ma'am? Yeah, consent agenda. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Next, we have resolution 21 208. Uh, resolution authorizing. 207. Say again, ma'am? Oh, I'm sorry. Resolution 20. 21207 is what we just put to the consent agenda. Oh. No, 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 no. No, you said that was 206. 206 was pulled. No, 206 was full. 205 was for Stuyvesant Avenue. That went to consent agenda. 207 is for the accessory for light oh, truck. No. That went to 207. We don't have 206 on the docket. I believe it was full. Okay. So we, next we have resolution 21-208, a resolution authorizing contract to McNeely's, McNeely's Financial Inc., DBA McNeely's Truck and Manufacturing, awarded through source well contract number 091219, Truck and Manufacturing, awarded through source well, uh, MCN, formerly National Joint Power Alliance, for the purchase of parts and repair services for five McNeely's refuse collection trucks for the division of one solid waste management 
for the Division of Solid Waste Management for a period of two years from July 1st, 2021 to October 31st, 2022, in an amount not to exceed $65,000. I have a question, Councilor Curtin. Go right ahead, Councilwoman. Yeah, um, so, so Mr. Cruz, maybe you can answer this. Um, will we still have to have this contract even if we purchased um, new refuse collection trucks, which we sorely need? Uh, Madam President, may I? Yes, go right ahead, Mr. Cruz. All right, thank you, uh, Madam President. Uh, Council Vice President, the, because we still have vehicles in existence from this brand, we would still need to continue to have this contract so that we can acquire the parts for those specific vehicles. Once the, the vehicles come offline, then, then yeah, there's no need to have that actual contract. Oh, that, because that was my concern that we're paying, you know, the for all the repair in these trucks, and they are so old, they're falling apart. And, right. and I don't Sorry. understand why we're not budgeting to purchase um, a, actually trucks that protect them from COVID and whatever else is going to come down the road. Uh, yes, so uh, in the capital budget, uh, Madam Vice President, we have... Um, um, we have set aside funding for uh, the purchase of uh, trucks and vehicles, um, but as uh, but these trucks, uh, as I mentioned, these are pretty much the workhorses of the day-to-day -day operation of the uh, of the uh, DPW, and uh, we will continue to have this contract until uh, we're done with okay. with the vehicles using those vehicles. All right. Thank okay. you. Yeah. Alrighty, so um, consent agenda? Yes, ma'am. Next, we have Resolution 21-209, a resolution authorizing City Trend to apply for an extension of time with the State of New Jersey Department of Transportation for an award of contracts for South Clinton Avenue, Phase 3 between Liberty Street and Cedar Lane. Uh, Madam President? Go right in here, Councilman. Uh, I, I don't know if it's a typo or something is wrong with this. Or she says... The top says that is for South Clinton, but what we are going to approve in the bottom part of the resolution said it is solved by the city council of the city of Trenton <coughs> that the city hereby requests an extension <coughs> of time to award the contract, the contract for ferry street with construction until November 18, 2021. I believe that we finished Ferry Street last year. So either the top is wrong or the bottom is wrong. Which one is which? Uh, uh, Madam President? Yes, go right ahead. Uh, yes, uh, thank you. Um, uh, Councilman, it appears that the bottom portion is, is uh, was uh, used from probably from a prior <laughs> template, and yes, but it should be South Clinton Avenue. And uh, it, it, to your liking, we can either amend it on the record now uh, so that it reflects uh, South uh, Clinton Avenue, or we can uh, provide a new resolution with the no, language no, change. No, amend, amend it because we need something yeah. to be. Yeah, but it should, Adam, you can just present a new resolution because we haven't voted on it yet. So, I mean, it's before the meeting. Okay. It's in the docket. So, if, you, if you're just going to make a, a clerical correction, just give me the new resolution. You don't need to. You got it. Floor. Thank you. Thank you. We'll do. All righty. So, 209 will be a correction. Uh, do you want that consent or roll call, man? <coughs> well, no, it could go on the consent agenda as long as the corrections are made between mm -hmm. now. And, and Thursday before the yes, meeting. So noted. Next, we have resolution twenty one dash two ten, resolution rejecting bids received for snow plowing and snow removal halting services for six months with an option to extend two additional six month periods on an as needed basis to accumulations for the city of Trenton, Department of Public Works, Division of Streets, bid through bid. I believe that's twenty twenty dash eighty six. And that's our typo, so I'll correct that on the docket. It through bid twenty twenty eighty six. No questions. You can add this to the uh, roll call. 
Uh, roll call or excuse me. I apologize. I just didn't agenda. <laughs> Next, we have resolution 21 211, a resolution authorizing change order number one per regulations with the New Jersey Department of Transportation to decrease the initial contract price by $75,499.10 for the reconstruction of West State Street from Calhoun Street to Prospect Avenue through bid 2019 73. I hate that, um, Mr. Onitary, you can't. You're on the phone, but um, this is the first time I've seen this happen, Ms. Sanitary, and I appreciate it. I appreciate the, uh, the decrease, but I'm not going to throw my party hat up until after they completed the job. But thanks again. That was completed last year. How was that? Yes, um, add this to the consent agenda. Yes, ma'am. Next, we have resolutions from the Department of Water and Sewer, Mac, Mark, Mark Lavenberg, Director. First, we have resolution 21-213, a resolution authorizing payment of New Jersey Pollution Discharge Elimination System updates. An NJPDES annual discharge permit fee for the City of Trenton Sewer Utility Department of Water and Sewer. Which is... Um, Give me the number. I'll, yes, this is 21-213. It's 136 oh, okay. I see. I see. I see. $654 for I see. a permit mm -hmm. for TDEP. Yes. If no one has any objections, we'll add this to the consent agenda. Thank you, ma'am. Next, we have resolution 21-214, resolution accepting a bid and awarding contract to Carroll Group. Removal of spoil, stockpiled and, stockpiled and stored, excavated material for a period of one year from May 15, 2021 to May 14, 2022, in an amount not to exceed $227,470 through bid 2021-16. Yes, ma'am. So noted. Would you like me to proceed, ma'am? Yes, please. Next, we have resolution 21-215, a resolution accepting a bid and awarding contract to certified health and safety services for POSHA safety training for a period of one year from May 15, 2021 to May 14, 2022, in an amount not to exceed $229,080 through bid 2021-23. Add that to the consent agenda. Yes, ma'am. Uh, that does it for the resolutions. We do have one ordinance. This will have to be roll called if there are any questions. Uh, the council can certainly ask. This was pretty much covered during the presentation. Uh, this is resolu this is ordinance 21-012 for which the public hearing uh, is proposed to be set for June 10th. Um, an ordinance authorizing the city of Trenton to revert to a calendar fiscal year from state fiscal year. Uh, once again, the public hearing would be set for June 10th on this. Thank you. Uh, Council President? Yes. Um, I would like to walk on the resolution uh, um, to uh, contract with Super LLC to demolish uh, the noted um, uh, uh, properties for, for the Department of Economic Development. Mr. Uh, Councilwoman. Mr. Collins should have that resolution because Mr. Delisle sent it to him. All right, Councilwoman Vaughn, um, none of, um, I, like I said to Mr. Delisle, the deadline for that material was delayed. Mr. Delisle, as as all other directors, has procedures and Again, protocols. Again, the Council President, I, I'm, a, I'm an elected official, and I, I would like to walk that on. If the Council members want to vote it down, then you should allow that to be voted down. Okay, I'm... I'm introducing that resolution and if, if the council wants to vote it down then they should do that but to deny that is, is, is I don't think that, that that's appropriate all right go right ahead councilwoman Vaughn. so um, mr. Uh, mr. Collin can you please uh, introduce the resolution please I'm going to have to find it because the last email I had from you indicated that you would not be walking this on. So just take me a minute. I'll have to queue this up. So just bear with me for one second while I go look for it.
Okay, so this is a resolution that doesn't have a number yet. Uh, the We're not actually walking on the resolution at this time. We're having a, I have a motion on the floor to allow the walk on for Thursday uh, by Ms. Vaughn. Uh, this is for a resolution accepting a bid and awarding contract to Super LLC for demolition of various structures under the Community Development Block Grant Program and Neighborhood Redevelopment Revitalization Pilot and RRP program for a period of one year from June 11, 2021 to June 10, 2022, in an amount not to exceed $544,160 through bid 2021 34. Uh, just to note for the record, the reason why the motion is necessary is because the uh, docket deadline stated in Rule A316 was missed. Uh, they didn't actually bring this resolution until the floor until Thursday. The docket deadline is Wednesday. Ms. Vaughn is asking that that rule be suspended to allow this doc this resolution to be yeah. walked. Um, um, Mr. Uh, Collins, I want to I want to pull up that rule because you didn't add the other part. The rule says that the rules of procedure says it's not Thursday. The the uh, the the rules of procedure. The ordinance reads clearly that the administration has 24 hours to add something to the docket and the sitting council members have 24 um, hours um, uh, they have 20 the uh, 24 hours over the, the past business day we have 24 hours meaning i can actually walk on a, or a, a resolution up until uh mon on monday Tuesday, uh, be, the Monday before the Tuesday meeting, and the uh, administration has until Friday to do it. Now, that's what the ordinance says. Rules of procedure. So I don't understand what what the but issue this is. this is not your ordinance. Pardon me? Did, I'm sorry? Just, just, go, just go right ahead and vote. Development. You did not put this together. Did, go, go ahead and vote. I, I, I know that, Council, uh, but but uh, wait a minute. But we should address the procedure so everybody can have understanding. Because it makes no sense that we clearly, none of us have an understanding of what the, 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 the law, the ordinance, um, the provisions of that ordinance. And I don't want Mr. Delisle or anybody to be unlawfully denied. Um, myself as well. So it doesn't matter who in the administration introduces an ordinance or even if it's a citizen, Vice President Caldwell Wilson, any council member can introduce that on their behalf. And you are an experienced councilwoman and you know that. So, uh, Mr. Collin. Yeah, I'm just give me a second. Let me review the rule yeah. of what you're talking about, see if your interpretation is something I agree with. Hold on one second, please. Okay, so the rule clearly states in, in rule three of the agenda, it says at the last, the bottom of the paragraph, all ordinances or resolutions presented by members of council shall be presented to the council president for review at least 24 hours prior to any agenda review meeting before the same are placed on the docket. So the agenda review meeting was Wednesday at 3.30. The request to walk it on is being made now because as of this afternoon, I have written an email from you saying you are not walking this on. And accordingly, the request is not really being made until yeah. now. So that is the, the, the last part of Rule 3 in the paragraph. All ordinances or resolutions presented by members of council, which we are doing now, shall be presented to the council president for review at least 24 hours prior to any so agenda, agenda review. The agenda so review. your deadline would be, according to this rule, 3.30 on Wednesday to walk on a resolution. No, 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 no. Mm -mm. 
The agenda review meeting is now. It's, We're reviewing it now. It now Tuesday. Docket, I'm taking that as the docket review meeting, man. No, it does that, not say. This no, is no, a no, 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 because the, because the last. This is our, a conference. No, 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 this, this is, is a review. Council President McBride, you're interrupting again. So the last. It's session, actually her meeting, ma'am. So no, 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 it's not. She gave me the floor. It doesn't matter. She can no, take no, 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 back she any time. Yes, again, Mr. Roberts rules she can. Again, it says before the same is placed upon the docket. So that paragraph distinguished between the docket and the agenda review meeting. Well, the docket is created on Thursday, ma'am. Okay, okay. The docket right, is created so, at the so docket. Deny. So, so if the council president wants to deny the introduction. She has. Okay. Council president, that's what you want to do? You, I, I stated that earlier, but you wanted to. Okay, oh, no, 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 no. I want to, but I want to introduce it because I believe that this is 20, at least, then it says all reports, communications, claims, documents submitted by the council at least 24 business hours prior to each council meeting. Read the whole paragraph. Read the oh, top paragraph. Ma'am, I'm reading the salient paragraph. No, no, read Ordinances the first sentence, okay. Mr. Collins. Well, wait, listen, 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 listen. We're That's by the administration, ma'am. Okay, it says by the administration, at least 24 hours prior to each council All meeting, reports. should be delivered to the clerk. So, All so listen, no, no, no. listen, listen, council we're not, not going to do this. Okay. So, I, I find so, it order. Read the first sentence. So, read I, the first sentence, so, Mr. I, Mr. so I deny the... No, 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 read the first sentence. On, and so council President, read the first on. sentence. Have Mr. Collin read the first sentence. Submitted to the council by the administration. You are not the administration. I, 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 I understand. The administration is Mr. Cruz. For council member to walk oh it on, it must be submitted 24 hours prior to docket review at 3.30 on Thursday. Mr. Collin, Mr. Collin, calm down. Councilwoman, Councilwoman. Calm down. I am. I'm going to continue with the introduction. And then go and vote it down. That's all. No, if no. You, if, 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 if you said, you just said. That you wanted to follow procedure. I am following the procedure is up there. And you don't want to go well, she's asking, and no, right no, now no, she's no, asking no, to suspend that, that rule. And, and, read, read only a certain and I, and aspect I said, of and, the, and, I, of and, the and, rule. and so, if you want to suspend okay. the rule, you ask in the body that, to suspend it. Mr. Collin, take it to a vote, please. Right. We have a motion by Ms. Vaughn to suspend the rule to allow her to walk on the resolution on Thursday. Do I have a second? Madam, would you like me to proceed to a second, 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 second. likely? Uh, we'll call the roll. Madam, would you like me to call the roll? Yes, go right ahead, Mr. Conlon. Uh, Mr. Blakely, to allow the walk on on Thursday. Yeah. Ms. Caldwell Wilson. No. Mr. Harrison. No. Mr. Michelle. No. Mr. Rodriguez. Uh, no vote. Mr. Rodriguez is a no vote. Ms. Vaughn? Yes. Council President McBride? No. Let's see where Not seeing that the majority has voted to allow the walk on, the resolution to walk on for Thursday fails. Can we move forward with the public uh, comments, please? Yes, ma'am. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this will be the public portion of the council meeting. Uh, the public portion, heard for public portion. Uh, Madam President. Yes, yes, Councilman Rodriguez. Uh, we, uh, we haven't finished introducing that ordinance, I believe. We went back to another item. Well, we don't have an introduction. Were there any questions that you had, sir? Because it's automatically roll call. Okay. By, by law, it must be roll call because we're a Falcon community. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> Public comment. <clears throat> I seen someone hand raised. Yeah, I saw somebody's hand go up and then go down. Does anybody wish to be acknowledged for the public portion of tonight's meeting? Not yet. I think it is. Mr. Machica. No. Yes. Hi, uh, council members. Appreciate it. I'll, hi, I'll keep this relatively quick. Um, I am, my name is Joe Marchica. I'm the chair of Our Revolution Trenton Mercer, which is Mercer County's uh, local chapter of the larger Our Revolution New Jersey network. And uh, our organization supports progressive candidates, pushes for progressive public policy at all levels of government, from city councils like this all the way to D.C. Again, I'll keep this quick. I just wanted to thank the council for approving the very first resolution on the docket in favor of the Medicare for All Act. 
for the consent agenda for Thursday. Uh, while I'm not myself a Trenton resident, our chapter represents many Trenton residents and have made efforts to support the Trenton community. Uh, and some of our uh, members have shared uh, personal stories with me about how our for-profit insurance system has let them down and harmed them. Uh, so I just wanted to thank you again, both on my behalf and theirs for putting that resolution on the docket. Um, I'm going to skip over some of the other uh, comments I have here because I'll keep this quick. This is going on the consent agenda. I just want to highlight both that now is uh, as good a time as any, maybe as important a time as any, now that we're starting to come out of a global pandemic to make sure that healthcare is treated fully as a human right uh, and to try to resolve the fact that we pay more, about double than most of the other Western industrialized nations for healthcare. Uh, I also want to highlight that healthcare is a racial justice issue because uh, lack of universal healthcare falls disproportionately yep. along racial lines. Um, and I just want to point out one statistic that um, a whopping 63% of New Jersey's uninsured individuals are people of color, and that goes up to 72% if you include all non-white individuals, whereas uh, minorities make up only about 45% uh, of the population. So there's a massive discrepancy. I know I'm preaching to the choir here for the most part, um, but I just want to, again, thank you, and um, thank you most of all for putting this on the consent agenda, and let me be the first to welcome you all to the growing movement to win Medicare for All, establish health care truly as a human right in this country, and set a strong foundation for racial justice in U.S. health care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Does anybody else wish to be acknowledged for public portion for tonight's meeting? And there's a lot of people in here, so uh, if anybody else would like to speak, please speak up in case I don't see you. Last call, public portion for docket items only for the May 25th, 2021 conference session. Do I have a motion to close public portion? I see yes, hand. yes, I, I had my hand open. I, I, hear, I see a hand raised. But okay, I'm sorry, I didn't see her. It just went up. Ms. Sherry Garrett, Council President. Go right ahead, Ms. Garrett. Yes, thank you. Um, in referencing uh, document number 21194 um, in regards to Medicare, um, I, I, uh, yeah, I, I think it would be helpful. It also will be helpful if um, we have health care for everyone, which also include coverage, Medicare and Medicaid cover alternative, alternative medicine as well. That will be a, uh, a great um, investment if we're really talking about, you know, uh, health care and the well-being of people of color. Uh, 21195, um, we're... Uh, my only issue with that is that the $1.3 million, how, what, where uh, are we, you know, how do we really help uh, Trenton youth? Um, I'm, you know, I'm just really concerned about uh, here we go again with, uh, we're, you know, we're doing recreation. Our kids need more than recreation. That doesn't put food on the table unless you are a, a, a gifted and talented, you know, person who's going into the NBA or whatever professional sports. So, you know, my concern is, you know, you know, how does these programs really benefit our youth? Um, or is it more so uh, a need to fund nonprofit organizations because, you know, we have, you know, various problems that are the same in suburban and rural areas. And I can say this because I lived in both. And, um, but you don't see it highlighted, but you know, it benefits our kids. Okay. Um, 21, 21, uh, 21, we're understanding, please, forward. uh, with the thing with 21, 199 with the college of New Jersey. Uh, yeah, I would like to see the matrix on that and how it will benefit our kids or how it has benefited kids had these kids. Were they able to uh, get themselves together to uh, be uh, employed, um, you know, be able to marry, raise families? You know, how does these programs really benefit? Again, if it's just, you know, um, giving them something to do as far as recreation, to keep them occupied, to justify the funding, that's not helping us. You know, I, I, I worked at a school district for a short period of time, and real quick, I um, 
uh, had to cover a class and the students wouldn't even work unless you had candy for them. And that's what the regular teacher was doing, was feeding them candy in order to do their work. So, you know, if we, you know, these are like, that, that doesn't benefit our kids. Uh, 21201 resolu resolution providing for insertion of specialized revenue in the budget. Uh, yes, I heard Mr. Cruz say that it's not uh, earmarked for anything. It's just really to approve uh, the money coming into our uh, coffers uh, in our account. But still, you know, how are we going to have oversight over the money once it's been once it's approved? Uh, 21182 for the uh, resolution of 24 Fountain Avenue. Uh, you know, uh, normally when you're demolishing a private owner's house that, 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 as you say, was on fire, normally it's up to the private owner to demolish that. So I'm not really sure why we are buying it. And if they won't demolish it themselves or they can't pay it for themselves, then it goes into intimate domain. So, you know, I understand all that about costs, but, you know, there's ways to go about it because it's been done plenty of times in the city of Trent, okay? Uh, 21202, uh, that, uh, for the, uh, 21202, please check with Trenton Housing Authority, uh, because they're planning, they do, there's a, a program, Choice Neighborhood, where they're planning on purchasing, uh, with a private, uh, private contractor or developer. So in that area from, uh, Darling Homes down to the Battle Monument. So please check in with them to see how we can, uh, uh, you know, work together to, to resolve some of our housing issues in that area. Uh, 21203, resident approved the third central amount of fiscal annual action plan. Uh, I, I didn't see anything in it, but, you know, I would like to get more information about it. Um, in regards to 21204, um, yeah, I live near a park, and um, they give the kids milk, which they don't drink, it's in the garbage cans. And, or they litter the park with the cartons, and um, maybe we can substitute the milk for water or Gatorade. And two, they give the children cold cuts, pork and beef, which is not healthy, okay? So maybe we can find some alternative, you know, uh, eat edible foods. Um, even the food in the um, school district is in the cafeterias that they supply to the students. The kids don't like it. They don't eat it. It's a waste of money. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's just... Stop benefiting our kids. I'm not saying that you have to feed kids everything that tastes um, uh, scrumptious, but they're not eating it. It's a waste. Um, 21205, um, 21205 and uh, 21209, uh, my concern is lead pipe replacement. Have We're going to do some reconstruction on the road, but my question, have all the lead lines, new piping been installed in these uh, in those areas before we start trying to reconstruct um, some roads and waste money. And also, um, I thought, um, you know, Council uh, President McBride was saying we should communicate with the engineers with Mercer County, since Mercer County, it is a Mercer County road, and they are planning on spending um, their the money that's been allocated in this, uh, um, um, that was signed by the president um, on the on their road. So I don't know if that was done or not, but to me, you know, we need to get into understanding shared costs. Um, 21210, my question is, we're hiring somebody for snow removal, but I thought that, that my question is, has the money been re replaced? And the 21211, again, this lead, light repl lead line replacement, has the, 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 uh, the pipes been replaced in that area before we start doing reconstruction of the road? Um, in regards to um, Trenton uh, Waterworks, I haven't heard anything about the forensic audit. What's going on with that? I mean, it's been a whole, what, almost nine months? And uh, where's the report? I heard nothing. Did the council get the report? What's up? Um, let's see. And the 21012, 21012, um, the reverting back to the calendar year, you know, as long as the city... Uh, uh, can uh, put together a substantial budget, and um, it's no, you know, we're not this. If it's you know a better budget, a streamline, uh, a, you know, you know, putting, you know, uh, showing costs that is appropriate for where we are in this time. I think it will be great. Why not? Um, but I don't understand if we're not going to approve this to January 10th, and we've got a meeting um, July 14th. 
They said it doesn't have to be adopted by then, but it's, this, it's you know, just as uh, the counselor stated, it took the minister, the council had to go to DCA for them to put together the budget that we just passed. So, you know, I don't, I don't know how that's going to work. Um, and um, who funds are approved property? Oh, and the, and the resolution, oh, you guys voted that down. So if I can get some answers to this, it would be greatly appreciated. I know this is just my questions, but, you know, a lot of stuff that was asked, uh, there were good questions, but, you know, I, I didn't get much answers out of. But, again, um, you know, it would be helpful because it seems like, again, we're spending money, which is fine. We have to spend money to make things happen. But it seems like there's a lot of money being respent on stuff. And we also need to be in a shared situation with this cost because we only two hundred, I mean, two and a half miles. So everybody's trying to justify spending this, this COVID money or the stimulus money in areas. And also we already, already been bonded as far as reconstruction of roads or dealing with infrastructure. And I don't see that there's meetings of the mind about that. We're doing things. It sounds as if we're doing something separate. I'm not saying that's the case. But, you know, I, I hope it's not the case, you know, because, you know, we, we, we shouldn't have to spend money that we don't need to spend, and we can put it somewhere else. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else, Mr. Conlon? Uh, do we seek any, does anybody else seek recognition from the council chair to speak during public portion? Seeing no other hands, um, I move to close public comment. I have a motion by Council President McBride. Do I have a second? Second. Second. I have a second by Mr. Michelle. All in favor? Aye. 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 Seeing none opposed, it's so ordered. We are now in specific comment. Um, yes, um, Council, Councilman Blakely, please. Is Councilman Blakely still here? I don't see him, ma'am. He may have been disconnected. Councilman, Councilwoman Caldwell Wilson. Yes, good evening everybody and I want to thank everybody for attending tonight. Um, I just have one thing I wanted to talk about. There's been a lot of talk going around about the American Rescue Plan and the funding we have and they have an advisory committee that is going through the weeds and going through the rules to try and show the mayor what they can spend and what they can't spend. Um, but it was recommended at the advisory um, council meeting that the mayor um, set up uh, public meetings in each ward to give, to give them an understanding of this funding and how it can be spent and how the city plans to spend that. So um, we're looking forward to the mayor setting up these meetings and particip to participation from the from the community, so that they can hear all the uh, all the information on on this funding from American Rescue Plan. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Harrison. Not at this time. All right, Councilman Mushal. Nothing at this time. Mike. Thank you, Councilman Rodriguez. Uh, no comments. Councilwoman Vaughn. Yes. Um, it's uh, 9.30, so I have until 9.40. Um, I want to just uh, acknowledge the death of George Floyd. And uh, this is the anniversary, May 25th, 2020. A black man was murdered by law enforcement, a police officer who the community trusted to do their jobs. I was recently listening to a program, a radio program called Opinions Matter. And one of our fellow councilmen was on that show and he stated something that was very alarming, that we have police officers in this city who refuse to engage in certain events or at crime scenes when they happen because they don't like their leader, the police director who is Sheila Coley. Now, I don't know of any job where you get to be insubordinate to say, I'm not going to do my job, that I was sworn 
to protect and serve because I don't like my boss. That's insubordination. And that calls for immediate grounds to be fired. Now, this is what's stated on that show by a council person, that he has police officers that had told him that they don't do their job, they will not engage, they will not risk, risk their lives to protect the residents and taxpayers of this city because they don't like their police director, who they say don't show up for work. Now, I will say that we get that report about all the directors in the city that are not showing up for work. But yet, you don't hear any, any commentary from our council persons about those directors and their behavior. But they Mr. decide Tyler, to come after, if any, somebody interrupting me, doing my comments? Because I just got a text that there's not a quorum here, there's just youth. Santiago oh, so, so you want to play that game again, Council President? That we should be dropped off the call when, 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 I, when I'm speaking just Listen, to shut me down? Woman. I know what's going on here. Councilwoman. No, 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 no. I will finish. Well, I will finish. Well, you know what? Well, you know what? I will have my own meeting and I will have my own Zoom call to speak what I have to say about this issue. Okay, but and we if don't you have think a right you now. are going to target you know, the first African American police off the director of this city during the midst of Black Lives Matter, during the midst of the death of George Floyd, Mr. Mr. Collins, and police department reform, then and, and, and Kathy McBride, we do not, you we guys, do not you guys, serious issues, we don't have a quorum, councilwoman, and don't and so you come talking to about the, the council down. members every time I speak that they're going to jump off the call because that's not what they got elected for. If you guys... I don't, I don't, my, my position is to have a quorum here, and respect for each When they're supposed to stay on this call, Council President, you should be calling them out about that. And and, and I will address it. But well, right you now, better I don't, address it because this is I, the second time that has occurred. Listen, this okay? is the first no, time listen. this has occurred. This is no, the first time that it's occurred with me on the call here. And you're supposed to be serving the people. And getting paid for the that council, service. You're the council president. And council if they're woman, that, I they can only go it. by what Mr. Collins has Well, no, 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 because it's the second time this has happened. And it's the strategy this that down. you are supporting Council President McBride, no, and you need to be called no, out of that. No, 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 no. Because no. here I you are. Mr. Collins, I'm going to have to um, close this meeting down if it's not a quorum. If we don't have four people on this Call. Would you like me to call? The, would you like me to call the roll, ma'am? Yes, please, please. Because Mr. <laughs> Mr. Blakely, are you present, sir? No, Mr. Collin needs to call each one back and get them back on this. Go call. right ahead, Mr. Ma'am. All I can do is call the roll. And that's call what. No, Ms., the president of council should order that. Ms. Cola Wilson, are you present, ma'am? Mr. Yes. Harrison, are you present, sir? Vice president of council dropped off. Mr. Rodriguez, are you present, sir? Yes, sir. Captain McBride, Mr. Council, yes, Council, Council President McBride is present. Yes, and Mr. And we do not have a quorum by law. We must adjourn. Thank you, Mr. Um, Colin, and I will address this tomorrow, Councilwoman Vaughn. I will and address I'm it. going to address it as well because it's unacceptable. We got 42 uh, citizens on this line. I'll and for, he, for the council vice president to drop off, for Joe Harrison to drop off, elected officials don't even complete the meeting. I'll, I'll address it, Councilwoman, but the meeting has been adjourned. And, and no, 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 because here we are. I, I can see. No, the meeting has meeting. been adjourned. Well, we're off the record. Stop taping, Mr. Collins. I have, but I'm going to close the meeting now. And so, on this line. Right, but we're going to close the meeting and we're well, going to close so the room. Have, and I will be having a Zoom meeting. On, on 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 Saturday and Sunday to address right, the issues and to speak to all the issues that's going on on this council illegally and unlawfully. Have a good night. Thank you, Madam Vaughn. I'm sorry about the dis the, uh, the, the the departure. Ladies and gentlemen, we apologize. We have a uh, we no longer have a quorum, so we must terminate the meeting. Uh, if you're not already home, please get home safe. Uh, please join us on Thursday, uh, and appreciate your time. Bye bye.